Good morning, good people. Oh my goodness, we are so excited to be back here in the studio. We've been gone for two weeks, but it's for good reason because what is this, guys? Our hundredth episode. Pew, 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 pew. You know, Chris, oh. I have asthmatic lungs, and I was hoping you would add to the sound effect. <laughs> At all. I, just, I, I am adding to the sound effect. He got I'm definitely going to add to the sound effect with these donuts. He, he got his donuts and orange juice to celebrate 100 episodes. I'm Kelvin Unique. And I am the baddest bitch on the block, Eric Devante. <clears throat> and I'm Christopher Armani as I smack on these donuts. You are fucking that donut up. up. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we are... They get right. We are. <laughs> we're supposed to stay together. Oh, uh, worry. I don't like when we, we do that because we, we never get it in sync. We can't get it right together. <laughs> we didn't even know that was happening. Yeah. Well, it, it, this is the 100th episode. This is typically how that happens. I feel like it should have been already like embedded. Like Destiny Chris Child never had to keep practicing. I'm Beyonce. I'm Kelly. I'm Michelle. Because they knew if they spoke Destiny before Child. Beyonce. So it started be over because we didn't know. Okay. And we are. They get right. right. Well, right. not with that enthusiasm. You know what? Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, we're not even going to reflect. So this is our 100th episode, and we are back. I let Kelvin start today because he has this extra whole energy that is just I like do. effervescent. And you know what? Should be enjoyed by the masses. I don't know if it's the extra whole eff- uh, energy, but it's the extra I'm a year out energy. I'm almost a year out. Of what? My wedding. Oh, yeah. My wedding is 10 10 20, 20. And I almost have exactly a year to the day to find my husband. And I am on an active search. I went mm-hmm. out last night to B. Hen's block party, which was super lit and super fun. Shout out to everybody that was there. Shout out to B. Hen and his whole team. It was super duper dope. And there were a lot of eligible bachelors there. Mm. I caught eye contact with a few. But you know, it's really weird in L.A. People don't speak to each other. They just look at you. Yeah. And then like, once you turn around and do a little spin or something, then you turn around like, where the fuck they go? They mm-hmm. just in the beard. So that's what happened a lot last night. But I do. I kept. I woke up with an expectation that I was going to find my husband yesterday, and I think I may have found him at that party. I just didn't speak to him. So hopefully he comes back around and sees me. Also, I wore this outfit to the party, and I didn't get to take a picture in it. So afterwards, can you please take my picture? I got you. Thank you. So like, Adam, I had a, I had a, I had a question <laughs> because oh here we go. No, I'm just curious. So like, before like. Gays shoot their shot. Do y'all know that they're gay? Or like what? Like what if? What if? See, he's this not is gay? that's a good question, Chris. Yikes. That's a very good question because in those situations where it's really super mixy, mixy, like if we're not at a gay club, then I don't automatically assume you're gay. Even if you're at a gay club, I don't automatically assume you're gay because you could be there with your girl. But I think it's all about the eye contact. If they stare longer, just because a nigga look at you don't. No, mean no, no, no. Gay. It's not. It's not staring. It's not look at you. It's a three second linger. If I make eye contact <laughs> with you from across the room for more than three seconds, you're going. Yeah. How does that mean that? Because if I look at you, like if I don't know you, and I look at you in your eyes for three seconds, you're going to feel hella uncomfortable. you be like, what the fuck, bro? Like, why the fuck are you looking at me, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> but, if, but if you're also interested, if a girl locked eye with you for three seconds, you'd be like, okay, she may be feeling me. I, I never know. think that. Really? Because <clears throat> just for example, remember the chick we seen at the New Year's party who said I had a nice blazer? Yeah, and we, she was we locked eyes. We locked eyes. Yeah, and, and she turned happened. around and broke her fucking neck. All she said was, you have a nice blazer. She, had, she, she kept said, it moving. She said, oh, you got a nice blazer. And I then said, she turned you. around. And she, she, said, kept, she, she said, kept thank it moving. you. And she broke her fucking neck to look, turn around, and you just ignored the fuck out of her. What kind of blazer was it? A cranberry blazer. Just cranberry? Any designs? Mm-mm. No, it was cranberry and black. She wanted to fuck. She wanted to dick. Uh, well, I don't believe you it. If it had prints or something, like... Something like that. Not to downplay the blazer, but like... Oh, she was ready. Yeah, she wanted to fuck. That was a st- that was a, a conversation. Started. I don't I don't think that. But she she li- she kept it mo- like she kept it moving. She kept Chris, walking. That was your that was your part. She did her part. That was her opening lines. You act. Those were her lines. That, that she was if, waiting if for yours was, to come. If that was her way of like shooting her shot. That was trash. Okay, well maybe she's trash, but that doesn't mean she wasn't <laughs> shooting her shot. I don't, I don't know. Like just just because you look at somebody for that don't that don't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit. Because if it, I'm out, like somebody it doesn't mean at me, shit until like it lingers. Or it's the look that comes with it. Like, how am I looking at you? Yeah. Like, you can you can, you can can tell energies. You can just feel it. I don't know. Like, for me, I don't really do a lot of the pursuing. I always have crop tops on. So they come to you. Yeah, my job is done for me. Because I don't. Like, I don't have to. Kelvin, I guess it would be like a thing like, is he gay? Mm. And I think that's the I think that's the thing. Yeah. Because I'm super nice. That too. Yeah. And, and they don't know if I'm flirting or if I'm just being super nice. No, nigga. I'm trying to get married in a year. Yeah, that's real. I don't know. I'm just... 
What can we do to speed up the process? Should we That's, do a dating thing? I would love to know what we should do to speed up the process. Chris. The dating thing didn't really truly work for Chris. It didn't. <clears throat> so I don't know if it's going to work for me. I will also have to vet these bastards because I don't want nobody wasting their time. And we can't do anyone you've slept with. Wait, wait, wait. That's a lot of people well, that I, I haven't slept with. That's a lot of people that you have. That's a lot of people that are options. Are you eating these donuts <laughs> or what? Yeah, we are going to eat the donuts, but you have them right in front of you. On the mic. Somebody On the mic. Them up. I only ate two, so somebody. And we heard both. Well, that chocolate <laughs> one is mine, so don't touch the chocolate one. I was, I asked you what you wanted, but I thought someone you had didn't have them patience. You, we were in but, the drive through that's why. Oh, I thought you guys were here already. <clears throat> oh. You know, sidebar, speaking of no patience, I'm so fucking hurt about the baby. I don't know what to do anymore, but I feel like... What about him? He has a baby mama. Yeah, he has a baby mama. And I don't like that, you know, videos are servicing of them in amusement parks with their child, and she's licking his face and shit, like... Yeah, that's inappropriate. We what don't about want that. What about, me? You? what about you? What about how I feel? What you do y'all know? like about the baby? F-E-Y the baby voice. has BDE. He has what? BDE. Big dick energy. That's what it is. I feel like the baby. You ask, I answer. I feel like the That's baby would is. actually slap me with a gun. It's his confidence. And it's his confidence, and it's like, are you talking about like why people are attracted to him? Or people like his music. Honestly, both. I only his like, music's good. No, he it's has good, not. He has, he has punch he lines. He raps the same in he has, every but he fucking has good song. Punch lines. What he are they? He writes well. He yeah. writes well. Name a line. Oh, and his you ain't antics are good. His what? His stage antics and his music videos are good. He has good performance. Have you listened to him lyrically? Yeah, he's trash. No. <laughs> I think. He's tra- pack a mail and I'm gone. What does that mean? Don't listen to just Shug. Yeah. I'm saying I've heard like songs. Have you listened to the intro? I've heard it in full. I've heard it word for word. He dropped he dropped the single before the album came out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard it. I he, didn't like it. He spoke so much about life. <clears throat> about his dad dying. Yes. Okay. <sighs> That's what, that's really all I heard was his dad died. I get that. Look, you know what, the baby. Put this negativity aside because you're not helping me fucking redeem this relationship. I, I, I just, I just want to know <laughs> what I people just like about him. I want him to see me for who I am and take me on. I, I don't understand what the problem is. Like, I'm not looking at Lil Baby, Lil Dirk. Like, I put all my shit to focus on the baby. And then you got some fucking bra looking at your face in an amusement park. I'm so tired of being publicly embarrassed. That's inappropriate. Yeah. That should whoop her ass. That should whoop her ass. Let's run up on her. You yeah. know, she's, uh, he's performed at K State Homecoming. Really? Mm hmm. Hopefully, if I introduce him, I'm going to introduce myself to him. Yeah. You should You should bring him to the show. I should. You should have. I would love I to introduce have. myself I think to he the would baby. knock the fuck out of you. Like, What's up, man? I'm Kelvin? No, that's not the, what you meant, I'm sure. It, I'm not going to say, wow, you have BDE. I'm going to be like, what's up, man? It's Kelvin. Nice to meet you. I might You're, say, you wow, don't you even You don't even talk that deep. I do talk like that when I'm in settings where there's rappers. And, uh, <laughs> oh, so, so when there's straight people around, that's how you talk. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Why? What? Oh, definitely. Like, Why we do you talk iHeart, like that? We was at iHeart, and we went to Vegas this past weekend, and I met like a couple of the rappers and stuff. Oh, yeah. What's up, man? You good? All right. All right, fam. Nice to meet you, bro. I'm going to email you. All right, man. I'm going to holler at you. All right, cool. But as soon as... Uh, <laughs> As soon as I met her, it's like, hello. <laughs> how was that? Because I haven't seen y'all since the showcase. Oh, how was the... Um, her concert. Did she sing in the dark? <sighs> out of shit. one to ten, I would, gi- I would give that... <clears throat> I'll beat your ass. I think out of one... Her, her performance solely was a ten. But overall, as a festival, I'm going to give that a seven. Mm. Yeah. And it was the first time, so, you know, cool. But, like... Mark, you know who Marky e. Basie is? No, that nigga is rude as fuck. He was he got on the mic. It was like, um, I guess his keyboard wasn't working or something. Something was wrong with his keyboard. He's like, man, fuck this song. Like, oh. And then he was he was talking shit to his drummer because his drummer, I guess, forgot to play like a hi hat. Um, he was like, man, play the fucking part. And he was doing like you know, telling him to play it, and he didn't play it. Um, it was I don't know, like it was just was this in Watts. He was white and privileged. Yeah, and Summer Walker, she is. She should never perform live ever again. She's new. Summer Walker stage present is uh, as trash. Interesting as she is. Wash, and did y'all hear watching her watching clothes washing the washing machine? Oh, and did y'all hear her uh, her rant about living in L.A. or like being in L.A.? Yeah, she said it's dirty. Girl, wash your face. Did you see the video where she was with like, spit. "Yeah, w- w- washing her face with spit"? No, I did not see that. It made her look really dirty. <laughs> she she got like a bath cloth. Put like was licking it and like was washing herself, and she called L.A. dirty. Yeah, 
And she's an L.A. stank. Mm-hmm. It's her face that smells like spit. <laughs> but, yeah, she she's trash live, like, horrible. I didn't know Ari Lennox sweat so much. But she, but she, she was, is she so was, fucking fine. She, like, Ari I Lennox never, was beautiful. She was killing No, but I never, like, really, really looked at her. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, she's like, she fine as fuck. She's gorgeous. Um, But she got titty sweat. I don't know if I can handle that. Chris! She, she is she, a real She was wearing a sweater. Woman. She was wearing a sweater dress, too. Are you but, serious? But you knew it was, it was, it, you knew you it was knew 105. It, you knew, you knew, knew it was 105. She knew it was hot as shit. And she did have that sweater on like the, the whole time. The titty sweat kind of like. She she wore the titty sweat to go see Lucky Day. So she was walking around in that shit all day. So yeah, she I, I feel like she should have changed. Just a little like, napkin under the titty. A little napkin under the she, titty would I feel like she should have wore a t-shirt. Like, why are you wearing a sweater dress? It's 105. It's 105 degrees. It was hot as shit. Yeah. I would not tolerate the slander about Ari Lennox. No, I'm not even slander her. I just don't get. You know. We. I love her now. I, apartment is my shit, okay? Yes, no apartment is great. Um, but she had titty sweat. And also I feel like if she's she should be she should be like somewhat rich now, right? At no. least somewhat. We are using that term loosely. Where very, she she may have a couple funds. Cuz mm-hmm. she says she don't have an apartment. I'm like, where the fuck do you live? Yeah, Why does she, she write new apartment then? I feel lied to. Cuz she know. she literally says on stage like I don't have an apartment. Would you let her move in with well, you? Maybe she got a house. Yeah, now. she she got more money than I do. That's true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she can move in. <laughs> Either way, it's a level up. Yeah, That's she can right. move in. But uh, yeah, I would as a whole, I would give that a seven. Um, if I was like a part of like booking people, I think I would have like not booked certain people and like try to get other people. Mm-hmm. But um, I think I'm like like next year. I'm hoping like maybe like we can get like a Frank Ocean or we can get. He still makes music. If if no. he puts something out, oh. like hopefully we can get somebody like him or I don't know. I just feel like it sh- it c- it could have been better, but it it was still good. But it just could have been better. You know, I can't get into Summer Walker. She's trash. Not her live, just music. I can't get into it. The so only song I like by her is CPR. And she don't even sing it like the actual version. She, like, does her own rendition. Yeah. That's terrible. Brandon put me on her when we were driving up there, and I liked some of her songs. Said by nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Said but by nobody. If you leave it to social media, the girls love her. The I people. I say the girls like gay lingo. People love Summer Walker, and I'm just like, mm, that's how I feel about Division. And I, he, I don't know. I feel like he overrated too. Isn't it him with like a choir? I don't know. I listened to the album. It's just like it's, um, Division is two people. Who is it? It's a group. It's the black man and the white man. Oh, can't get into them either. Yeah, I don't know. But you guys kind of like Nars Barkley. You know how. Oh, CeeLo was the singer. Then they had the dude. That I thought Nars Barkley was CeeLo. Mm-mm. It was a white man too. Oh, how was the uh, showcase? Really, really good. Um, my one thing, I shouldn't have went to the showcase high. I need to not be a pothead twenty four seven. So what? Uh, well, like, did you like? How did it? Did you win or like? Let's, well, yes. Chris, it was time for an intervention, and you skipped right over. It. <laughs> Intervention. I'm okay. He was crying out um, for help, and you didn't even care. But he he knows that he smokes. For you, it's totally <laughs> different. You don't you don't even like to admit that you do weed. I don't. What is it, what is? It, how do you do weed? <laughs> you do how edibles. Do you, you do weed? you do it. You don't you say you do edibles? I do CCH. I you do edibles. <laughs> no, I do CCH. CCH. You do oh weed. It's okay. I mean, you do weed. <gasps> my sweater's dirty. They don't also it won't be uh, picture worthy. So yeah, the showcase was really good. Um, I feel like. Because I was high, I was, like, kind of just, like, in the moment, but, like, not on top of the moment. Still fucked it up. But I was just, like, I knew for myself. I was like, damn, Eric, you're kind of tired. Um, it was cute, though. Like, they had a – it was a really good turnout. And then they had the two teams compete. I feel like because this was the first one, of course, there's kinks that need to be worked out. But, like, the, the second, the third, and the fourth, I expect it to be, like, really solid because we've done the first one. So, um, did y'all win your team? Yes, we fucking did. And this um, is the Good News Radio Showcase, right? Mm hmm. Uh, shout outs to the whole Good News family. Shout outs to Jackie, who was the captain of the red team. Uh, and shout outs to Keith. It was just, it was a really good event. I feel like, what was the best part of the event? DJ Dash was like the DJ D wreck of it all. And I ran to Dash last night <clears throat> at the block party. Yeah, Dash has been fucking shit up. Dash is a socialite. I told him, said you're a socialite around the LA circuit. Yeah, shout out to Dash. I met some of the Fry Brothers too. And I said, what up, man? You good, man? Come on, please stop that. <laughs> I didn't realize you do that. Yeah, 
No, I'm not here to judge. And I'm mad you do that. I do that. You're not even being yourself. That is me. I'm I'm a Scorp- I'm a Scorpius. I have a Scorpius side. Can you a, please stop claiming Sagittarius that? Sagittarius side, just Can like I have a hood ass side that. and I have a hey world side. I'm over it. And this well, my, it's not really like a a hood side. It's like what up? What's good? Can I hear my donut dropping? Yeah, a little bit. It's a little hard. <laughs> I mean, old fashions are hard though. Are they? I mean, when you they're bite cakey. them to them, they're they're, they're fine, cakey. But hmm. but yeah, y'all don't do that. Y'all don't cold switch. I don't have a reason to cold switch. Kind of hard. I cold switch every day of my life, whether it's at work, when I'm meeting <clears> different <throat> people. Only time I cold switch is when I'm around white people. No, I cold switch with different groups. I learned that from um, Carson Daly. I only cold switch at work, like when I need to be professional. I'll change my vernacular only if I don't feel like you'll like you'll understand it culture wise. Like the gay lingo, the black lingo, like it, it depends on yeah, who I'm talking who I'm to. With and who I'm around. Yeah, but I'm not gonna change like my tone. My tone didn't change. Like, like I, I would never picture Eric, hey, what up, bro? Oh my like God. I would never and I don't even I don't ever see you doing that. What you don't ever hey, see? Hey my nigga like, was good. Like I don't ever you, say Eric will never do that. But Eric will never do that. What's good, bro? Yeah, I don't have the voice capacity. Well I could. If I blew five. But then I have to like keep that energy. Yeah, give, and that's yeah, a lot of work. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot. From the gut. Energy. Yeah. It's From the gut. That's my fantasia moment. Yeah, Kevin, I don't think you should do that anymore. <laughs> you know, what? I was like, what up? What's good? Is that better? What do you want? How do you want me to greet people? No, just do you. You I gotta mean, do what you gotta yeah, do. Do you. Yeah, period pool. Um, so how was your week? Your two weeks? Well, I'm still trying to find a husband. Mm-hmm. Um, it hit me the other day that we are a year away. And, um, so you're okay. Hypothetically, you meet somebody today. Like you're really going to rush. I'm not going to rush. We're going to fall in love. I spoke this into existence. So let's say you meet somebody fucking August of next year. Okay. I'm mm-hmm. asking like, you're still going to be okay, like, Hey, we- we're getting married in two months. Yeah. I'm not wasting my wedding. Oh. Okay, I mean, but I won't meet him in August. I will. We will meet. No, I'm just saying hypothetically. Like if we you, will meet and we will fall in love this year, so next year we can get married. I'm not gonna talk um, bad about. Don't because this. it's happening when my wedding comes and y'all niggas in all black don't say shit. Are you picking these suits or do we just get our own black uninterrupted black? You can pick your own uninterrupted black as long as. It's oh wait, cute. are we not in a bridal party? There's no bridal party. No. Would it be called a bridal party? Well, my groomsman. groomsman <laughs> bridal party. Oh, my groomsman. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm really gay. Yeah. <laughs> There's not one. Why? I don't want to deal with it. Is it a budget? No. Not so no, much he just don't like, be, he don't like being mean and tell people, like, oh, I don't want you in my wedding. Um, well, I've also been a best man in two weddings and a groomsman in two others. So I've been in four weddings. And yeah, you feel like they're supposed to be in yours? No. it's not how that works. No, I don't feel like they're supposed to be in mine. I just don't want the headache of doing it. Down that I've been like in the waiting four times, like you gotta pay for a suit and you gotta make sure everybody's stuff is correct. We're gonna have to pay for a suit. I just feel like why am I putting all that pressure on people? Just show up in your uninterrupted black, sit down at your table and have a good time. I just don't understand the flow of your wedding. I do. You wanna know? No. Okay. You'll be there. That's fine. So so that means like no moms are walking people down, like no dads, no no, 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 that. This is a mess. It's not a this mess. Sounds so, <laughs> wait, this sounds so. This sounds trash. It's beautiful. So time out. We're so everyone's gonna already be there. So who's gonna be at the front? Like who's who's walking down? You know me and who was I just talking to about this? We literally just had this conversation. Brown? Me no, me and my friend Josh. We just was talking about this. He asked me who's walking down first. Yeah, like how does that work? We'll probably walk down at the same time. Hmm. Because I know I want entrance. I know he probably want entrance. So, do you mind if I stop at the rib shack before? No, there'll be food provided. Is it vegan? No, because my friends aren't vegan. I don't like the sound of this. I'm still gonna stop at the rib shack. No, my food, my catering will be lit, bitch. <laughs> <Your cake? laughs> That's not all we want. My is catering. Cake. Oh. My catering uh, is going to be lit. I'm going to be fucking that shit up like yeah, Chris eating these donuts on the mic uh, okay, as soon as you're walking down the aisle. Okay. <laughs> like, shit, we ain't even supposed to be serving niggas yet. Why does Eric have a rib? <laughs> oh, this, this doesn't sound put together. Uh, oh, it's well put together. It's well thought out. Well, we have a year. It so we're well already going to be sit- sitting. They're going to say, well, they're not going to say all right. So we're going to hear the music. Both of you niggas are walking down together. Not holding hands, but like, okay, so... There's a center stage, so a center circle stage in mm-hmm. the middle of the venue, 
and then there's tables, kind of like a banquet type setting, like mm-hmm. tables, like very elegant flower pieces and things like that. Because I don't want to have two things. I don't want to have the church and then the reception. I mm-hmm. want everything to be in one spot because I don't like that downtime. Do you hungry and you don't know what to do? Let's just have a good old time. Like, okay, time all together. Never mind. It's continue. I'm going to rip shot. No, you're not going to no, go ahead. have food and shit. So we're eating while while the wedding's going no, on? No, you're not eating while the wedding's going on. You probably have like your champagne and a little bit of appetizers. You may have like a So we are eating while the wedding's going on. You're not having a full blown meal, but, but probably, we are eating. There probably be a tray pass. This sounds so Y'all know what tray pass is? When a tray's passing, basically. Like the waiters walking around yeah, with trays. Yeah, 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 right. Yes. So it'll probably be a tray pass, like when you come in. And then there'll also be like a champagne. Mm-hmm. So then you'll be able to drink and stuff and mingle and then like please take your seats and then everybody will sit down at their table and then we will begin the ceremony. I'm not going. <laughs> wow. This is gonna be dope as shit. I'll be there. Can you just Thank FaceTime you. me or something? Oh my god. Bitch you FaceTime <laughs> I, this is it doesn't Bitch if you FaceTime it's it my doesn't wedding. sound I don't, it sounds amazing. No, I it doesn't. You're a freaking hater. You at least put a black T-shirt on if I'm gonna Facetime. Yeah, I'll, I'll dress for the occasion. Yeah. Okay, because if I see you on Facetime, you're not all black. <laughs> Eric, hang the fuck up. <laughs> I just, you're I'm not, not gonna fuck up the vibe. I'm lost on how, like, you have uh, it's a reception and the and the wedding together. Like, yes, that's, it's the same thing as if you go to another wedding. Like, I just don't want to change the venues too much. I don't want I don't want people have to keep moving and going all the way around. Let's have it in one spot. Let's do this thing really beautiful and very nice. It's going to be dope. I think you guys are overthinking it. I see it in my head. No, I think you're underthinking it. No, I'm not underthinking it. I definitely see the whole layout is black and white. It's beautiful. It's really nice. And it's one spot. So, like, you come, you sit down at your space, at your table with your people, and you mingle and you're having fun. It's just like when you go to any other corporate banquet or you go to somewhere else, you don't automatically sit down and they automatically start serving you food. There may be a speaker first, and then they do things. Like, it's... Yeah, but it's, you said we're well eating like, appetizers while the wedding's going on. It'd be a tray pass. So just like little babies, like finger foods. <clears throat> Not something for you to get full off of, because you're probably going to try to get full off all the weenies and little <laughs> pastries and shit, knowing you, you have a plate full. That's why I'm not giving people plates. They're going to have it on napkins. This sounds so... Uh, so amazing. Okay. Chris, how was your week's? Also, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I don't. Even, last week, I, I don't remember. I mean, we went to the festival. Um, yeah, we went to the festival. After that, I don't remember. Did, I don't remember what I did last week. But well, not last week. The week before that. But uh, I got a raise on Friday. Congratulations! Pew pew pew. <laughs> but I, it didn't come with a promotion, and that's what I want. A new title? Yeah. And it was, it just sounded like bullshit still to me, so I don't I don't know. Like, she, she I think she knows that I'm trying to find a new job, uh-huh. so, because she kept saying, like, I just really hope you don't leave. Like, I really hope you don't leave. Like, I'm trying, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, if you're trying, you would have been promoting me. Uh-huh. So, what's, what's the issue? That, I mean, that that's just what I got from it, but... Is it a significant promotion? I mean, a significant yeah, it would be. Pay it would be a, the 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 raise was significant, but the promotion would have been even more significant because that's truly what I want. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, I'm still not gonna not look for a job. So it's coming. It's coming. It's no, coming. I hope so. Yeah, that was my week though. Trust me, I feel it. Because if I tell another resident that I'm planning on quitting, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you be telling these niggas Hell you quit? Yeah, I tell these people I plan on wow. quitting. What if they tell you your boss? I don't care. I'm letting the universe move me. I'm mm-hmm. letting the universe move me. Cause they be sitting there. I'll be there for ten hours out the day. They be like, "Damn, Eric, are you staying later today?" I'm like, "This is my shift." Every fucking day that I'm here. What the fuck did you? I was watching your story when you had like that mask on. Oh yeah, there was like some. So the back of my building is getting a Habit Burger built. So there's construction. Oh? Habit Burger. What is that? Some white McDonald's. Um, Habit Burger. Mm-hmm. Let me Google Habit Burger. I think I've had it once. It's not bad. And there was some construction going on, and because the buildings are connected, whatever they drilled into, you could smell the fumes come across. And I'm in the package room dying, so they gave me that face mask. My supervisor was just like, maybe you should just record yourself and put it on social media. I was like, all right, why don't you give me the green light? It's open for you hoes. <laughs> so now I've just been back there talking shit. So is this supposed to be healthy? No, that's not healthy at all. No, no they haven't. No, no, no. Oh, oh no. 
That either. That shit looks terrible. It's yeah. a white McDonald's. Anyway. Um, as if white uh, McDonald's isn't white owned. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I feel you. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Any hoes? Any good sex? Mm-mm. God damn it, Chris! Don't you go back in that hole? It's probably gonna. I probably am. Chris, we're not gonna do this full episode with you with your mouth full. It's the hundredth episode. Why not? Chris has been fucking these donuts up since the start of this show. And I don't know why y'all just leaving these here. Well, because you have them right in front of you. Move the box over here because you're going to eat all the donuts. There's what, two left? Five. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is this? Five. Five. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no. Um, How was your well, week? I thought yep. he... Two you weeks. I, didn't no. talk oh, about it. I just bad. talked about the showcase. Um... It's it's been interesting. I've been in this very weird period of like, I don't know what the fuck is going on at this moment. I don't even want to say I've been juggling men because it's so I dropped them a few times. Like I just, this is so a transformative period, and I'm going with the flow. I am really self sufficient though, and that's fun. <laughs> that's great. I'm going to New York in November, the second week, so I get to experience adulthood in New York, which is fun. But aside from that, like I don't, I don't know what's been going on. I'm going with the universe. Mercury retrograde is done, so I can't blame it on that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's <laughs> a very interesting time. But before I get what, into bitch, what you makes better read. You so different. I don't know. I just, you know, how you just. I'm practicing gratitude because I'm a brat. Like I am a fucking brat. So, I'm like trying to practice gratitude, but like during this, you have to be like introspective and be like, "What the fuck am I being bratty about? Like, what is bothering me at this time?" So. It's just been a weird period. I'm just feeling it out. I can't even describe it. That's how I know I'm just being a brat. Keith, if you're listening, we need a new mic. I mean, mouse. Cause, uh, it's there. You're just moving it fast. Now, now it's there. At first it wasn't. Just keep her in that corner. But I didn't include this in Bitch You Better Read. But, you know, I felt like a bitch yesterday because on Facebook I shared this story about Little Nas X retiring. Um, well, taking a break. Not retiring. Taking, taking a break. break. And, you Taking know, a break. I, my thoughts, a lot of people were like, yeah, he's accomplished a lot. He needs this break. He needs what it for mental it? health, mental health. Now, me. That's what he said. No, that's what, no, that's what the that people were oh, commenting. Um, you know, the goody two shoes. But me in my Beyonce, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson work ethic mindset. It's just like, no, first off, Old Town Road, uh, Old, which was in bad. It was better than Old Town Road. But I was just like, mm. so. That and then I'm sure he's dropped like some other songs that no one is talking about. And I'm just like, you know, I don't really want to discredit his work, but I feel like he is going to be a one hit wonder. I cannot prove that he will be a one hit wonder. Panini is number four on the charts. I don't care. Panini is, a, I like Panini. Panini it's, is number now four. Now, Panini is trash. I just like it. It's catchy. It's yeah. catchy. Panini is number but it's four. Not good. Seven is uh, platinum. So he he has some credibility, just but, because you put but no, don't mean but shit. I'm saying, but it does not validate him taking the break. Do you know that Beyonce just sells nose Carter? If she does not perform on the stage this year, it'd be the first time she has not performed on the stage since 2002. Before that, it was 1997. She a be- break hasn't she performed? She hasn't performed on the stage, not this year. She hasn't. No, I got it'd be the first time since 02 she has not hit the stage. She hasn't performed at all. Not at all. Not on a stage. Yes, she had. Beyonce? Beyonce, what's she saying? What's she do? This year, 2019. And don't count Homecoming. Because it's old. Was it Coachella this year? No. No. Oh, wait, that was last year. That was old. She has not. This will be the first time she actually took a break. She has not performed whatsoever? Not on nobody's stage. I don't believe that. I haven't seen her. Beyonce's been chilling. I don't believe that. Okay. Either way. Nothing. The point is. One, I do not want to talk bad on his fame, but me being a realist. And that's what this is, ladies and gentlemen. I am being a realist in this moment. I personally do not think Little Nas X is good. He's not. I, I just, I, and I feel bad saying it because I'm just like, I'm so passionate about my dreams. So I feel it. But I don't, one, know if this is a dream for him. And two, think he's good. And because he's taking this break at a time where he does not have a significant catalog, like you, you, you cannot take a break when your catalog is just like, he has seven songs. That's it. And it's like, you're just, your sound is a trend that is like kind of going. And it's like, how long are you taking this break for? If you come back, you may not have the same success when you come back. And I did feel like a bitch. Cause I'm like, damn, I am riding this little boy's back. 
But it's it is what I think. I don't think he should take a break right now. He needs to solidify a fan base because right now I feel like Lil Nas X fans are fickle. Our kids. They're kids and they're fickle. They like it because it's trendy right now. But he cannot. I don't know what this boy can do. I really don't know. Only time will tell. But I, I don't feel like I'm wrong. No, you're not. I I feel like he's trash. I do feel like, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't like DJ Unk. He made two steps oh, and got shit. the fuck home. Sure did. So <clears throat> yeah, I feel like an old time row isn't even a hit really. Like it's just. I mean, it did hit. What was that? It was me. I'm sorry. Oh, it did hit. Sh- like it got on the billboards for 18 weeks straight. Like mm-hmm. great, but it's not. Yeah, but it's not like you know. Ain't nobody about to say, "Oh, put on that old time row." Like, "Hey, put on that look, put on that panini." Yeah, no one's about to say that. You know, I like panini. I think it's cute, but okay. So, platinum records and number ones at this point in life don't mean shit. They don't. It does not. Streaming is just different. The power of so- social media will sell your record for you. You don't have to do any promotions. You don't have to do any live shows because he doesn't have much stage presence. He oh, does, that like, is horrible live. He doesn't have to do anything for it to be so. People saying, oh, you know, he has a platinum record. So the fuck what? Well, I don't think, I don't agree with him taking a break because in this industry, we are so fickle and we forget you about five seconds after you've been here. And for him to only have one hit, this would be the time he should be riding this thing out. He should be doing all the festivals up until 2020 and riding this thing out. In 2020, at the end of 2020, then, then he can say, you know what, I'm about to take a break. But right now, no, he's, no, st- he's still to- too new for that. Nigga, who, who the fuck are you to say I'm taking a break? Well, I can see like you take a break to say I'm about to do new music and then come back. So like take like a month or three months off. Take three months off and then hit us back with some new shit. Go around, tour this album, this EP, get your little panini. It's seven and, songs. Uh, it, that's enough for a set. He better not take a full break, though. That's enough for a set. He better make enough. He better keep making money during this whole He got to ride this break. wave. And how long is this break? Because I know he just canceled, like, two festivals. He did. He's playing. Now, this is why... Does his bank account that full to the point where he just, like, fuck it? I don't know. I don't what, I, he so. got a little bit of uh, that Wrangler money. I don't know how much that Wrangler money is. I'm sure he's getting, like, a fair check, but it's nothing like, oh, I'm done with music. But this is why I say I don't think that this is his dream. Like, I feel like a Megan Thee Stallion, this is her dream. Because Megan, once uh, Tina Snow... So she makes me so happy. <laughs> and her dog, too. Um, I just got blinded by passion. So, yeah, like, once Tina Snow blew up and Big Old Freak took off, like, Megan kept working. Mind you, Megan lost her mom during that mixtape. She lost her grandmother during that mixtape. It's just like, but she kept going. And I'm not saying if Megan can do it, you can do it, because everyone's mental state is different. But I'm just saying you can tell with Megan's work ethic that this is a dream and she is not going to sleep on it. Little Nas, little Nas X taking a break at this time lets me know that he was playing with music, did not expect for this to go this far, and then all the media just slapped him in the face and he does not know how to handle it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm also hearing some rumors that he, he may not be gay and that this was a scandal. I hope that's not true. I think it's true. Oh, no. Little Nas X is gay. I, I would like to think he's a little flat. I don't know what is what it's anymore. Uh, when he was Minaj X, when he was a Barb, Lil Nas X is gay. I don't know why people thought this was, that boy's gay. I feel like, if anything, media is too much for him because, you know, he had the whole moment on the shop. Um, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think that may be what it is. And in that case, then I'm like, yeah, sure, I guess take a minute. But I this think, too shall pass. I think he wasn't prepare for the fame or was he actively media trained that nigga was and I bored th- i think that he don't old time, old time road. he don't he don't have it we gotta think about where he came from and his background and i don't think that he was mentally prepared for the amount of fame that he said he was he literally said like before he was like literally sleeping on the floor and now he has the number one song is that really every like rapper's fucking weeks. story oh i was sleeping on somebody's floor like nigga where was your mom or, like where are your parents he I was living with his parents he's only like 17 18 and I, he was sleeping on the floor he did not have a room i've slept on floors but i'm I've slept on floors and my family growing back up east. not growing up i mean that's like, what i'm saying i feel like that's every rap oh man i had to sleep on my floor i had to sleep in my car like that's every rapper story I feel like these niggas be lying. Nas X is, what, 15? So how is he? 20. That nigga lying. You shaved five years off his life. Um, In the comment section, are they saying anything about this? Because I need to know. Are they talking about us? Or are they talking at all? Right. Wake no, the fuck up. No one has said anything about Lil Nas X. 
What are they talking about? Guys, shut it. I need to know that I am not fucking crazy. What are they talking about, Chris? Cause, Congrats cause on the hundred episode. I'm never on the. Thank you. You're never on the what? Because you don't pay attention to the board. I don't pay attention. <laughs> Anyway, Jackie and Ray said congrats. On Thank that. you. So Jackie says she wants to go. Can she uh, bring? Oh, she'll bring an amazing wedding gift. Oh, um, Jackie, you're invited. Just go. We're uninterrupted black. Funny she doesn't need food, bottle. just the drinks. Um, and she said I flaked on her yesterday, which I didn't. And um, <laughs> Keith said it could be low batteries in this mouse. And this shit needs to get changed. Hmm. I, I'm assuming this takes triple, triple A. All right, I'm ready for a bitch. You better read. So on this 100th episode edition of Bitch, You Better Read, number one. Number one! <laughs> me, 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 me. Students reportedly pinned down their classmate and cut her dreadlocks at Virginia School. There is currently a tension surrounding the Emmanuel Christian School in Springfield, Virginia, as it has been reported that three sixth grade students have been reportedly bullying a student, and they crossed the line when they cut off some of her dreadlocks earlier this week. That's a lot of reporting. I know, right? According to NBC Washington, Amari Allen, who was 12, said three boys who are also white students cut off her dreadlocks on Monday while reportedly pinning her down. She said, they said my hair was nappy and I was ugly. Stephen Danish, the head of the school, said that administrators were deeply disturbed by the allegations. He continued to say, we take seriously the emotional and physical well-being of all of our students and we have a zero tolerance. We have a zero tolerance policy for any kind of bullying or abuse. Amari's grandfather, Dwayne, that is a real <laughs> Louisiana <laughs> pole dunk spelling of Dwayne. Dwayne. Yep. Do, do and you D E W A U N E. Okay, Duane. that's how you spell it. Dwayne. 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 Yeah. Oh, a little Baltimore name. Dwayne. Amari's grandfather, Dwayne Allen, said, My heart just broke. I was just paralyzed. I couldn't get myself together. Amari detailed the incident and said that everything occurred during recess. She claims one boy covered her mouth while another held her arms and the third boy cut her dreadlocks. She was reportedly scared to tell anyone. However, on Wednesday, when her grandmother was doing her hair, she noticed portions of her hair were missing, and that's when Amari told her what happened. The family contacted the Fairfax County Police, who made a report about the incident. The news outlet also noted that this is the same school that Karen Pence, the wife of the vice president, Mike Pence, teaches at part-time. They reached out to her office for a comment on the matter. However, they have not received a response. This would have made a funny interview. Like, if they interviewed her, that statement that she said. What's wrong? she was like, um, they said I was ugly, and um, what did she say? They said I was ugly. My hair was nappy, and, and yeah, I'm ugly. I think that would have been a hilarious interview. Why? Just I feel like she would have been crying in that moment, and well, I think we all would have been cracked up. The interview it was, up. was there. It's, it's we, I mean, I didn't up. see it just now. It's, I'm just, saying. it's not. It's whack. Like, not it's whack. Oh, my it's God. Sad. Lord. It's like, But it's I'm, just, I feel like it would have been It would have been a funny moment, like like think? for a meme or something. I feel like that would have been hilarious. I think because of the shooting. <laughs> and there's it, no way no one thought of that. I didn't think <laughs> it. I didn't think because, okay, one, she's very pretty. She gives me very uh, Willow Smith in ways. Yeah, um, she gives you very really, yeah, she gives me that. And it just I don't know. Like she wasn't necessarily crying. She was kind of disengaged after a while. She, maybe she's tired of telling this story cuz you know a black parent when they're pissed off will run a story out of you. You just <laughs> tell the shit 10 different fucking ways. Um so she was just in her phone while the interview was like getting her questions across. And then the grandparents were sitting there on the couch. It was just kind of like it just was what it was. Mm-hmm. But the story itself is disgusting and to these three white cunts. I just White people. Not kids will be kids, but like, who's raising these bitches? Yeah. Who is raising them? Because like, what even gives you the the nerve to feel like this is okay? Racist. Was it racist? Was it racist? What do you mean? Was it racist? I don't know. What? What don't you know? I don't. I'm because lost. I don't know. I don't. I don't know all the background. I don't it's know. three white motherfuckers who who pinned down a a, a a black girl. I know, but like if it was a white girl and they cut her hair, and the white and the white boys are white, I wouldn't say it was yeah. racist then. Like I don't know, you wouldn't say it was racist. No, what would you say about it? It's fucked up. Because I don't know if it's like kids being badass kids, 
where be their kids. You serious racist. right now? I I I am being a little bit serious because I as I think about it more, I'm like, are we putting racism on it or is it actually racism? I think like, that's is, a, is good a badass part. kids being badass? So kids? if this I'm if thinking, this was your daughter, if this was if this was Onyx, I'd be pissed as fuck and everybody would get their ass beat. But I don't know. Oh, your daughter it, will be Onyx. Yeah, my daughter's name's Onyx. The boy's Oak. Yeah, oh. the boy's Oak. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Try me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Try Go ahead. me. Um, no, um, I don't know because I know I'll be pissed, but I don't know if it's racially motivated. I don't know if it's just badass kids. I don't know the makeup of the school neither. It's a Christian school. Yeah, and them Christian ass bastards be bad. I don't know. I get what Calvin is saying. I don't. Um, this is why Oak will be bullied. No, Oak will not be bullied. And Onyx, clearly. Because I thought Onyx was a nigga this whole time. <laughs> no, Onyx is a woman. Number two. Hold on, wait. Before you read number two, okay. I forgot something about my week. Oh, I'm, I just, no, I just want to ask a question. Oh. I just want to ask a question, though. So, y'all y'all seen Empire. Remember when, um, what was Lucia's son's name? The youngest one. Hakeem. So, remember when he had sex with uh, Anika? Yeah, uh, what what was her name? The mom? The stepmom. The stepmom. I don't what was her fully name? remember her name. Uh, but remember that honey happened. Boo-boo. Honey Boo Boo. But remember Kitty. that happened. Boo Boo Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say, like, you know, my dad's ex wife. You're lying. No, no, I just have a question. I just yeah, have a question. I don't know. I'll meet you out there, Kelvin. <laughs> <I'm just> have- <laughs> <laughs> I just have a question. I just want to know. What? My my dad used to be married okay. to this fine ass woman. Oh my god, Chris! And no. I just want to know. No. no, absolutely, motherfucker, not. No, 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 Destiny's Child. I literally one, left the studio. Two. This is the remake. No, Future and White Club I didn't even have to hear the question. I came in. I don't even know what the question is, Mariah but Carey, no, no what? I don't even know what the. I don't know what the question is. Just no, no. If it has to do with your stepmom, she's not my stepmom. Is there another no song reference I can use? I already did Destiny's Child and then Mariah, Mariah Carey. Carey. I did that. Oh. She, she's not, she's not my stepmom. They were married when I was in middle school. Let me Google another one. Chris, she's that means that she was your stepmom. Yeah, in middle school, she was. They broke up like years is ago. She throwing it at you? No. You just want to catch it. This Megan is what Turner. happened. This is what happened. She Please elaborate. Okay, well, I'm I, I, I was on Facebook, and um, oh, you old fashioned. It's old fashioned. <laughs> I mean, oh, Ooh, sorry, I actually got a glaze. So uh, I was on Facebook, and the two, her two sons, we used to be cool growing up. And I was like, oh, I ain't seen these things in a while. Let me go on their page. So I went on their page, and the mom was right there. I was like, damn, she's still fine. So I went on her page. I started liking a few photos, and then I sent a friend request. Then she accepted, and then she sent me a message and was like, hey, you're so handsome now. You know, I, I felt as if she was shooting her shot. No more by 3LW. No, she was not shooting her shot well, she dm'd I mean, me and said oh my god hey chris you're so handsome blah 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 yeah that's something that people that's what older people say young that's people not all the time do. that's not what do. they do auntie's like oh my goodness look at you you grew up to be so handsome that's what no, older people that's what her, older women her, do all i think the time. it came different from that's her she was like she said do. oh my god chris like you and she started using emojis no by ringo star so what are y'all saying <laughs> no to <laughs> <laughs> no, what are y'all saying no to why no leave that woman alone why are you trying to just holler at your step grandmom she's I mean, not step- my stepmom they were married when i was in middle school they broke up also when i was in middle school that was your stepmom yeah it, yeah it was that's gross how's it gross it's that wild. ain't it's how's it gross actually not okay why is it not okay chris because your dad and you would be sharing pussy okay he wouldn't know i wouldn't tell him that's not a problem for you no it's like Diddy and his son, Chris. You know what? Go ahead. No, I just want to know what's the what's the problem. Like, why no, Chris, why not? I want you to do it. I don't think you want to know what the problem is because I have given you all you said is no. Well, by a few <laughs> different artists, and you know, I just I feel like I got my point across. Chris, but ahead, why are we saying no though? Let me see if I can find another artist. Chris, go ahead and do can it. Can I can I get an answer? Like, why are we saying no? Like what do we get? What do we, no? Because what? it's high key inappropriate. I wouldn't fuck any of my mom's exes. That's gross. That's super nasty. But why? Y'all still haven't answered my question. Why is it? Why I am I saying no? Gross. Because it's like your father already was in that, and now and she looked at you like as her child. No, at she one didn't. Point in no, life. she didn't. You we were never were close. We were never close. So now you trying to get close now? You yeah. Didn't, y'all, you didn't know how she felt towards you. She may have felt like she was close onto you because you were her step. We didn't even. We never fucking spoke like that, listeners. But now she in my DMs talking about something. Oh my god, like you're that? so handsome. What is spoke like that? Hey and bye. That's it. Hi and bye. That's all we ever did. 
We never had like any bonding moments, like no type of special nothing. Can I see you? I'm disgusted. Absolutely. Um, listeners, if you have any more songs titled "No," <laughs> if you could just send them to me with the artist, so I can keep throwing them out there. What's her name? Here she go. Hold on. I, damn, I, she fine. Hold oh on. my god, Chris. One second. And you're lusting. She still. She fine. I don't think this is okay. She not fine. She don't even look like she's the mother of three. She's pretty, but Chris, there's so. Does many, she look like she's a mother of three? So many girls your age that you are. She does not look like she's a mother of three. She, she looks like she's in her thirties. I don't care. She's she's pretty. She's pretty. She's but fine as hell. Uh, okay, we're pushing now. The one with the sunglasses on. Oh my God. Give me my fucking phone. phone. Oh, give me my fucking phone. Chris, I just don't recommend. I really Ross. don't. I would not share a Can sex buddy. I would not share a sex buddy with any of my I parents. Now. I'm not sharing a sex buddy with any of my parents. At all. Like, why would you want to bond So it's that? inappropriate it's because so of inappropriate what? Because it's gross. It's been done. It's been touched by your father. So if this wasn't a parent, y'all would feel like it's okay. Yes. So if this is like my homeboy, it's fine. Okay, you. No, I'm asking. You like to date a little too close no, to your I'm relationship. No, I'm asking if this was like a homeboy or or just a friend or whatever, then no. then it would be okay. No, this is the sec- if she was a friend. No, no, I don't know her. Like, let's say I don't know her and she dated a, like a whoever. You see, this is becoming a reoccurring thing too because I feel I'm like at, about but two I'm or at, three I'm episodes. Asking a question, yeah, Chris wants to date with people. He breaking up people's knows. relationships and letting people know that they are not right for them. That's, then you slide what? That, in after. Yeah. Now you want to fuck your dad's ex? I okay. First of all, I never said. Time, I never and, said I wanted to fuck her. I'm just asking. I just I just asked the question and nobody. And all y'all keep saying is no. No what? <sighs> I've already given you all the songs. No, I have. do not invade her vagina. Yeah, that's gross. Go to number two. Your dad has been in there and came in there. Right. You gonna do the same? You gonna do the same? No, I wouldn't come in her. Why how, would I come in her? How, how <laughs> Why awkward, would I come in her? How awkward our family dinner is gonna be? I know. She's not in the fucking family. Hey, Dad, Chris, we both ate this turkey. We also both ate that pussy. Chris, you fall my in dad. Love. My first of all, my dad doesn't even come around for Thanksgiving or none of that. Well, he came. He's not invited home. for that. He came around her. Okay. And you about to do the came same. Came around in it. Like father, like son. Number two. Number nasty ass Chris too. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy forced to resign after hitting a white inmate who threw a walker at him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? He threw a walker? <laughs> yes. Oh, is there a video? Uh, I believe there is. Oh, jeez. I got to see this because in my mind, this is hilarious. It was on Hollywood Unlocked, actually. Oh, um, shit. I think I know what you're talking about. A Flager County detention deputy has been forced to resign after being investigated for allegedly using excessive force on a white inmate. In surveillance footage from the incident, deputy Jared Tazewell is attacked by the inmate who throws a walker at him. He then punches the man with a closed fist, causing him to fall. The inmate, who was identified as Mark Duncanson, 54, who was released from custody six days after the incident. Following an interim investigation, officials determined that Tazewell violated agency policies by using excessive force. Tazewell then resigned from the sheriff's office. So Tazewell is the uh, deputy, and then Duncanson is the old man throwing walkers at people. Excessive force. I'll be right back. You said there's batteries in the bathroom. I was about to say, if you go try and fuck that woman on this little break this that little I'm reading. break, you little nasty guy <laughs> sitting there a noob. Excessive use of force will not be tolerated at the Fla- Flagler? Flagler County Jail. I don't know where this is. Sounds really podunk. At the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Ricky Staley said, During the investigation, investigators determined that the inmate's behavior did not warrant the level and type of force used by the detention deputy. He resigned in lieu of being terminated, which was the likely outcome of the investigation. The state attorney's office has declined to file charges against Tazewell in relation to the incident. Now, I would just like to say that I'm wondering if he was fired because he is black harming a white man. Because if I... I have... Not much insight, but slight insight as to, like, the treatment of inmates. And I know that police officers are pretty much trash. Mm -hmm. A fair portion of them are trash to their inmates. So the fact that this inmate threw a walker at a deputy who did not provoke him, then the deputy responds with force and then is forced to resign. Is it because the inmate was white? Because Maybe because he was elderly. He was 54. 
He was handicapped. I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to be that person um, to throw a race on everything. But, you know, in this country, you cannot help but ask, especially when there are inconsistencies with trends. Like, if most... I don't like that generalization. But given the past history of how some cops treat their inmates, if an inmate starts the incident and the cop retaliates, wouldn't you just punish the inmate, not have the officer resign? This leads me to believe that this is only happening because the sheriff was black and the inmate was white. Because he wasn't old. Can we sum it up? I was in the bathroom. The white man, while you were sending your text, the white man, (laughs) 54-year-old inmate, Mm. something Duckinson, threw a walker at Tazewell, the sheriff, who is black, Mm -hmm. and then Tazewell had to resign. There are no charges being filed, but he had to resign. Who's black in this situation? The cop. Racist. I feel like it's racist for that one. And Dunkington is white? Yes. Yep. Can't necessarily speak on the other girl. I mean, the other guy. <laughs> no, I can't speak on the other girl with the dreads. Like that situation, I'm really not sure of. This one, I feel like it was race driven. All this shit is. Yeah, I'm not a firm believer in that one. But um, that's that. That is crazy. That every every time like something happens to a black person from a white person, we automatically just put race on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's. I don't know. It's it's okay to me. I think it's racist, <laughs> and I have no problems with thinking it's. I racist. think it's racist, and I only say that just because all of the bullshit we went through those four hundred years, and yeah, which we will probably never receive reparations for. I feel like we would never. A, I feel like that's. A, um, I don't feel like we would. I feel like the the people who really deserve them all did. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing too. I don't. That's what, I'm saying. what do we do with the reparations? Like, what? Why do we need them? Well, I cast the fuck out. I ain't gonna. Question I mean, them probably because our ancestors, I guess. Yeah, but like, are they gonna give reparations to like the Asians that were put in concentration camps here? Let's focus on what we. Need right. To. Let's focus on roots. And, uh, okay. And twelve years of slavery. It is the year to return. It is the year to return. We're supposed to be going back to Ghana, but nobody went. And four hundred years of slavery. And yeah. I, I support that. black people. Uh, no one put me in that group. Me. I'm so. <laughs> what I'm <group>? so. <laughs> Whichever one we supposed to go back to. God. I'm so <laughs> pro black and I love everybody black. But race is a thing, and it's sometimes race is not a thing. Race still goes on in 2019. I know. I oh I know. This black child. This dark skinned black child is. A Have y'all ever black experienced child. racism? Like, and it happened to y'all. Uh, yeah, I think now that I look back, like when I was going to, um, interviews in Kentucky, especially like with admissions counselors and higher education, I definitely felt like the racism was there. And also when I went to other schools in my county, like they would literally tell me, don't go to certain schools by myself because they're very racial divided areas. And sometimes when I would walk into high schools, I can kind of feel like just like like what the fuck is he doing here like why is he here like who is he who sent him like is he even qualified like things of that nature so i definitely can feel like systematic racism in that if that if you will that way but no one's ever called me you fucking stupid nigger because i want to go to fuck off and that's when the, hey bro who the fuck you talking to is gonna come up <laughs> Not they go. Either. They go say, take that uh, bass out, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that's that made up ass bass voice. Over. Have that's you heard? Uh, I feel like none of the racism, if any, that I've encountered was enough for me to immediately classify it as racism. Mm-hmm. It's been a lot of like, like it. W- it would have to be super subtle racism. I've been called a nigga by a white person. I have too, but and he was like that- on meth. Yeah, he was like he was on drugs, yeah. and, he, and he said it as if like he was like just talking and was just saying the word, and I didn't know how to react. Like I didn't even I just stood there. Like I didn't even really know what to do. I didn't know how to feel either because I'm like you're on meth. One, I don't want to touch you, and two, and he kept saying it over and over and over, and I'm just sitting here like dog. <laughs> like I mean, it's very it's very uncomfortable. Like when another race says it, mm-hmm. so like when Cardi says it when. When, like, anybody who's not black says the word, I'll just be like, what, for what? You know, sidetrack, and, well, it, it segues, um, not into the next story, but conversation. I shared this story not too long ago about Fat Joe's uh, radio show interview where he's saying that 
well, I don't want to get his words wrong, but basically, Latinos are black. Um, all music is African music, like it has the basis of Africa in it, and um, that whether or not Hispanics want to acknowledge it, they're black. And then from there, conversation just kind of shot off. Um, people were saying that you know there's a difference between being Afro Latina and Latino versus just being a uh, Latino and Latina. I personally don't know. Like I told y'all, coming from New York, we have Puerto Ricans and Dominicans saying the word nigga, and I don't think twice because that is, I'm so used to that. Um, but then you come out here and then you'll hear like a Mexican or El Salvadorian or someone saying it. And I personally, like, I'll be bothered, but then I'm just like, oh wait, but is this is the same thing with Puerto Ricans and Dominicans? So I, I I just stopped until I could figure out my feelings on it. I just stopped. You know, I used to be super bothered with anybody saying the word, and I was like, okay, only black people can say the word. But as I've gotten older, I don't care if you say nigga in the song. Like I don't even care no more. Come do fight you because you rapping. I'm right. I mean, so I can't police over it. it. But now, if you say nigger and you have ill intent with it. Oh, it's going down. But if you rapping along with Kendrick Lamar, like the video of Kendrick Lamar brought that little white girl on stage mm-hmm. to perform the song that, like, where you from, my nigga? Well, it's when they've got the she phone, said, my she nigga. Say yeah, she said, she said nigga. What did, what did the crowd do? Well, Kendrick made her stop. Right, as he should have. But why would he bring her on the stage to sing that song? You and didn't, you didn't her, have and to say her, And ask her, do you know the words? You got it? You got it? Don't hype her up to sing the words. To put her out there like that, but and why, when she says the words, you reprimand her. But why couldn't she just be her? like, so, "Yeah, my why she couldn't do that?" Because I think as a kid, you don't necessarily have those boundaries. Like I don't think because I don't think racism is something that's taught, or just like that type of ignorance is something that's taught. So for a child who's constantly hearing a song, and that song got a lot of radio play. They're just catching like "nigga" is another lyric, mm-hmm. so it's not like oh, this is gonna like. This is oppressive to a group of people or I'm about to like piss people off. She's thinking the next word is nigga. And then after that word, I'm going into the next part of the song. So for her, she's just living in the moment. I feel like, I don't know. I just decided that unless I'm planning on beating people's ass, I'm going to stop policing. And I'm sure. I think it's all about intent. By herself, she said that all the time. I don't want to. When you, say, when you say a little kid, like what, 10? Uh, no, she's probably like 14. So she knew to blurt the fucking word out. Like 14. But also, I just think it's like your intent with the word. Just like when people say fag or say that shit's gay. I hate that word. I think that's all. So you're okay with white people saying nigga? That's what it sounds like. I'm okay with them rapping along with the lyrics. So you're okay with them saying nigga? I'm not totally okay with them just like nigga, nigga, nigga. What up, my nigga? No. So but Jordan like, called you and was like, nigga, I got to tell you a story. It's a penthouse. She said, she said, nigga, I got to tell you a story. I'm like, oh, shit, wouldn't happen. That's your reaction? <laughs> it's Jordan White. Yes. Yeah, Jordan's Italian. Oh, girl, I'd stop that. And she's Italian? Yeah, she's Italian. That'd be stopped to me. Wow. I don't know. I've been going back and forth about this whole N-word thing, and I'm probably losing a lot of listeners. They're probably like, Kevin, what is going on? Yeah, everyone is, yeah. But I don't know. What's, I don't know. I've really been going back and forth. I don't know how to feel about the N-word. I think it's all about your intent. Like, if you like, fuck you, nigger, then that's totally No, different. put a, put a, put an AA on it. I mean, put an A on it, not an ER. Nigger. Yeah, so if, nigger, if people are calling you nigger, you really no, about to say you're... Yeah, don't, don't call me nigger, because I don't even like you call me nigger. I don't understand you sometimes. Number three. Am I lost? Number three. You're, you are. Am I lost you're in the, the wind? You're in the sunken place. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely not in, the, not sunken in the sunken place. place. I'm black as shit. I love my black... I knew it was 400 years of slavery. Y'all didn't. If that was the case, you wouldn't be okay. You would not be okay. You would not be okay with a white person calling you that. Why didn't you go back to Ghana then? I've been working. Child, the Africans are going to pay my bills. He missed the group me as well. He wasn't invited. You fraud. But 1619, 100 years, 400 years. Number three. Number three of 400 years. Domino's is offering $30 an hour to taste test new garlic bread. Here you go, Chris. This is the job you've been waiting for. Ooh, you've been praying for this. You've been waiting for this, and God answers your prayers. Money and carbs. Why are you the, take that out? Because I'm not working there. <laughs> Money and carbs are the most common guilty pleasures, and Domino's is giving you the chance to have both. The pizza chain is now offering to pay customers to taste test a, a potential new menu item. 
According to CNN, Domino's posted a job opening on LinkedIn in search of people to spend a day taste testing its new garlic bread at Chris, Domino's. that's a sick day. It is. Yeah, it is, actually. Um, a well-spent one, too. At the Domino's regional headquarters in Australia. Nigga, this is in Australia. Well, that's a sick week. The job is offering $30 <laughs> an hour for the full seven and a half hour day and includes a pizza lunch. I'm going to be fat as fuck if I do that. The company Chris, also- what's the difference between in and out? I'm not fat as fuck. Oh my god! I I will be fat as fuck if I do this. The company is also offering to pay for a hotel and flight if you are chosen for the job and do not live in the area. Chris, this just keeps getting better and better. I didn't know they. This just keeps getting better and better. It may seem like easy money, but Domino's has very specific requirements in order to fill the position. Uh oh. The ideal candidate never never met a carb that they didn't like. Chris does not identify as a vampire. Chris understand the perfect crunch to softness ratio. Chris and is passionate about food innovation and having fun. The opening list. Having fun kind of took you out, but <laughs> I have fun. The listing is also asking for a minimum of five years experience in garlic bread consumption. What? Has a detailed understanding of the pizza and garlic bread relationship. Has working taste buds. Has burned their fingers at least once to be All able right. to wait for their garlic bread to cool down. And has a history of reviewing other people's food choices. Oh, Chris. The application... <laughs> The application process is very straightforward as well. The company is asking applicants to complete a survey and to explain why one is the perfect applicant for a job in 200 words or in a 30-second video. This may seem like an unconventional method to food marketing, but Domino's is not new to this. Previously, the company unveiled a delivery robot with hidden hot and cold compartments as well as a delivery drone. Period pool. So, from the sounds of this, Chris... Is this something you'd be interested in? No, I'm not a I'm not a garlic bread connoisseur. connoisseur. Jesus Christ. No, I don't like garlic bread. I, I like garlic bread. I'll eat it with something, but I'm not. I don't buy garlic bread and say, "Oh, I want this." Like if it's there, I may consider eating it. Like nigga, I have to have five. Who has five years experience of consume? What? Yeah, yeah it's people who've been eating garlic bread for over at least five years. Twenty five. Yeah, should. but no, I'm saying like what? I don't know. I just feel like this is it's too many. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Requirements. Like, it's too many requirements to do that. Mm, I just, Entirely too many. I just think it's kind of a gag job. Like, one of those jobs where I'm just like, I don't take this shit seriously. Granted, it's a real opportunity, but I'm just like, uh, $30 an hour, though, for seven and a half. Are they paying in USD or Australian dollars? I don't know. Do they have different currency? Yeah. What is it? Yeah, what is the Aussie? Is it, what do they use? The Australian dollar. What's it called? The Aussie? It's called AUD, the Australian dollar. Uh, oh. How much is it worth? I don't know. I'm going to assume ours is worth more. Why? Because we're black? No, because the USD is usually worth more. We're not going to make the story black. Um, <laughs> we made every other story black. <laughs> this one, I, just, I don't see how it works. Why Kelvin? Gotta, why I got to be garlic bread? Would you be interested? You're a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian and I love <laughs> carbs. So I think I may be interested in it as long as there's no. You know every it. carb? Huh? They said you have to know every carb. No. No, you have to know a carb. There's, there's not a carb, no that, carb I like. that you don't like. Exactly. And I love bread. I love donuts. I love all that stuff. Grain, whole wheat. Sign me up. Breath is gonna be hot as shit. I know how to fuck, but I don't like hot food, so that's what it got me. Mm. You don't like hot food. I don't like hot food. I will literally sit there and wait for my food. I don't think you're human. What? You don't like hot food? Like you don't like consuming hot food? I don't like the. I hate that. I don't. No, it's gotta be. uh, It gotta cool down a little bit. I I mean, duh. No one's gonna eat it blazing out the fucking oven. No, that's what they But it sounds like you want it to literally be cold. No, I don't want to be cold, but I want it to be cooled off. Number four. I felt all the judgment. Mm-hmm. I felt all that judgment. While the piano playing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I thought we were a family. This, this is why background music is so helpful. For this to be our 100th episode and you guys to treat me like this? It's never necessarily dead air. It's more so like a moment episode, of judgment. Okay. This may be the last time you hear Kelvin on the get. Number four. Okay. Um, (laughs) Fitness influencer jailed after creating 369 Instagram accounts to harass other bodybuilders. I literally just wow. According to the Daily Mail, 37-year-old Tammy Steffen of Pasco County was caught by police last year in July after she made her 12-year-old daughter lie and say she was kidnapped from her home. Prior to her sentencing, 
The FBI reported that Stefan made 18 email accounts to harass a former business partner and her rivals in the fitness industry. Over the course of two years, the mother of four has con- contacted six people via phone, uh, phone calls, text messages, and private messages on social media. I plan to slice you up into little pieces. Your blood I shall taste. These are quotes from the woman. Um, all hell is going to rain fire down on your world like never seen before. That's another quote from the woman. Um, the constant harassment began after Stefan believed that the ex-business partner allegedly caused her to lose a competition. I believe it. She called the police on July 8, 2019, stating that she found a headless doll in her front yard with a note saying, new toy for the kids. A few days later, <laughs> she contacted police again and claimed a man grabbed her daughter's arm and tried to kidnap her. Stefan told police that she suspected her ex-business partner made the kidnapping attempt. However, his alibi proved that he was in Tampa during the alleged kidnapping mm. due to providing surveillance footage. He got off. Investigators asked Stefan's daughter again about the kidnapping, and she asked what would happen to her mother if she told the truth. They searched through Stefan's cell phone after doubting the kidnapping story and found messages from the woman harassing her former business partner. Mm. She was charged with filing a police report, tampering with or fabrication of physical evidence, and tampering with a witness. She also tried to convince police that the kidnapping plot was da- her daughter's idea once she was taken into custody. Okay. Um, mm, this sounds real... White. Yep. Quick summation. So, real seriously, white. A fitness influencer basically told the cops that her daughter was kidnapped by, and then suggested that it was by one of her fitness comp- competitors. Then, when she was caught by the police for doing that, she blamed her 12 year old daughter and said it was her idea. Well, she came up with the idea and didn't go through. That's her idea. You know, I, this is real white. I don't know what's going on in the world anymore. So I stay home. Imagine being twelve and having to fake a kidnapping, and then having your mama got all these damn muscles, so she already confused. Mama, daddy walking around, <laughs> and now mama, daddy talking about you got to act like you got kidnapped. Oh, the stress! This poor child is stressed. How, how would you fake your kidnapping? If you had to fake a kidnapping, how would you fake it? Like, what would you do? Like, how dramatic would it be? Mm, it'd be really low-key. Really calm these days. Maybe throw myself in the back of a van. Mm-hmm. And just sit there. With some snacks. Some mm-hmm. weed. Some stuff to pass the time. A PSP. Because mm-hmm. I don't want them to come looking for me in my apartment. Because then the jig is up. Yeah, but so, if I'm just in some random van, they'll never find me. And then like, it could be the next Tupac story. It could. Eventually, I pop out though. You get bored. You get bored. What about you, Chris? How would you fake your kidnapping? I would just go to another state, have somebody there call somebody with money, and say they need however much money to get me up. And then I'll have them fly me back to here, and then hey, I'm alive. <laughs> be very simple did you use some of the money I would get I would the money that they would send the person who kidnapped me yeah mm. that would be for me I would want to be dramatic I want to like I want to like throw stuff around my apartment <laughs> to make like I had a struggle I would leave like traces of my beard here like so <laughs> make, like, a, like so they like pull my beard Coming here what? and like like you're like oh no they grabbed him by his beard this is crazy <laughs> it was a real struggle and then I would probably, <laughs> and I probably would like just like get like a I call it Uber, but from like some like somebody else's Uber, so I wouldn't know it was me. And I'd be like, "Oh no, my tracker's on," and they like lead me to like a farm, and they would never find oh, me. Oh damn, I would have to turn my location off. Yeah, so then like I would get to the farm and I'll turn my location off. Then after there, I would have to like call a taxi from a payphone at the farm, and then I would just go to Big Bear for the weekend. For the week, what are you gaining from this? A (laughs) storyline. Would you want Hollywood and like to report it? I would want Hollywood and like to report it. What if they didn't? I'll be pissed. Yeah, I'll be so mad they didn't report my kidnapping. At least let there be some concern because you work there. Yeah, what if uh, it has been to work at a few days? Whoever you called for the money, what if they didn't pay? Oh, when I come back, all hell is breaking <laughs> loose. How much would you ask for? 
Maybe like 500 500 I was about to be like Nigga like I'm not paying that I'm about to say I need a few outfits By 500,000 I wish a nigga would tell me, oh, I got killed for $500. That's it? Motherfucker, keep him. <laughs> wow. $500? I'm like, that's really all he, like, no, I'm not about to give you $500. <laughs> that's not even worth paying. Like, that's not even worth. I want 500000 of them things. That's sad. I feel like that. that's a good work for me. If you say so. Back. That's student loans and shit. Yeah. That's probably my debt. Mm. So. That should be good. Number five. Number 500000 for Kelvin. <laughs> First transgender boxer Patricio Manuel is the new face of Everlast Be First campaign. Transgender professional boxer Patricio Manuel continues to break down barriers and make history in inspiring ways. He was just named as the new face for an uplifting campaign from boxing staple Everlast. It's only been less than a year since Patricio Manuel officially became the first transgender boxer ever to compete in a professional level fight. Prior to that, the 34-year-old was a well-known female boxer before transitioning back in 2013 at Page Six Reports. Now, the popular boxing brand Everlast has named Manuel as the newest face of its Be First campaign. The campaign celebrates athletes who have, who have broken down barriers and been first to accomplish things in the world of boxing that no one has before. Previous Everlast campaigns featured boxing legends Jack Dempsey and Sugar Ray Robinson, and a future campaign will feature Gingy Martinez, the only above-knee amputee to beat an able-bodied fighter. In the video, Manuel expresses the importance of being your true self. A lot of people in boxing who I talk to, they would come to me and say, you could have been one of the greatest female world champions, though you would throw it all away to be yourself. And I tell them that's how bad I felt living a lie. Living your truth is going to is going to hurt but it's worth it he continues adding there are so many people that have said that it's impossible for someone like me a trans man to be able to compete against a man a non-trans man and win and i proved them all wrong that night period now i share this because you know class for patricio manuel um but I share it because, you know, the comments, the comments, the comments, I really just do it for the comments, are just so toxic. And I feel like these are all teachable moments. I feel as a trans ally, I must advocate because not a lot of people are going to do it. You saw Malik Yoba walk off the root interview because he did it unsuccessfully. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we I just... We haven't even talked about Malik's ass on this show. You're I just... brother. Well, he was our frat brother. I think he... No, I know they took him away from the Sigma Betas. But. I think he denounced his letters, but he's paper, so can you do that? I don't even know. Like, do you give your certificate back? Like, yeah, how does this work? Like, I don't know. He's paper. Um, so, I say, my one thing that I want to say is that it is not cute, it is not comedic to misgender the trans community. It is not. It's not. And that was a lot of what I was seeing because, you know, I realized on social media that people don't necessarily comment their initial thoughts. Instead, they comment the thing that is the funniest to them and that they believe will gain them the most likes, even if it is a recycled comment that they saw on someone else's page. You bitches are not slick. Mm -hmm. Um, But I digress. Um, I do have one just really quick question, and it's kind of ignorant. Patricio. I don't like the name. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I don't like the name at all. Was so many his options. real name Patricia? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> you know, Patrick could have been an option. <laughs> Patricio. I just that's what got me. Patricio. Go ahead, Patricio. Fight. Do whatever you need to do. But we're gonna talk about this name. Name is Dirt. Why would you, Kelvina? Kelvicia. She sounds like a. Czechoslovakian whore. Kelvina. Kelvina. Yeah, she's a whore. <laughs> Patricia. Go go ahead, Patricia. I'm happy you're making strides and breaking boundaries, but we're going to work on that name. I just want to encourage people to stop. Like, to stop disrespecting the trans community. Like, I understand. I use that term loosely. I understand that you guys don't necessarily ex- like accept or respect what it is that they do. Or who they are as people, which, I mean, I don't think you're obligated to do or not do. But, um, yeah, I don't I don't understand why there's such a blatant hate and resistance towards the, the trans community. I, they're not doing anything in their existence. But um, a lot of you guys just like to keep misgendering and just being toxic. And it's, it's just, it's fucked up. It's corny. I wasn't going to say anything, but I think I am. Go ahead, Chris. Speak your truth. There's a third mic. Are you... 
I don't get it. Trans. Like, I don't understand. No. Like, I just don't get it. I don't get why. Get a sec. Why? Why? Like, I don't get it. And I don't even know what my question is that I don't get. I don't understand. Like, what? For what? Like, like why they change sex? For what? Because they don't feel like they're in the right body. My thing. I. I just. I don't know. This, this is gonna sound cliche. I just feel like God made us how the fuck we're supposed to be. Like, if you're a woman, be a woman. Like, that's. I understand that Y chromosomes, S chromosomes meet, and that's how a male or female is created. But if God wanted you to be a man, he would have made you a man. That's just me. That's just, I, I don't, I don't know. I want to bring a trans person on this show to create dialogue, but I'm just so afraid of how it's going to go. Yeah, I don't want to be here for that. But <laughs> you're kind of the person that needs the conversation. Because me and Kelvin are like, we kind of understand. I don't. Like, I just... My thing is, I realize that there are just... This is my view of the world. I feel like the world is supposed to be super complex. Like, there are supposed to be people like the trans community because the world is supposed to have depth to it. And we're supposed to be open thinkers. Like, we... I read yesterday that the world is, like, class. Um, and, and you're just learning. You're learning the world constantly. The world is school. So... Everything can't be black and white, you know. There, there are different mixed breeds of dogs and cats and shit. Um, you got biracial human beings and all this stuff. Like things are just supposed to be deep. And I feel like the trans community adds an extra layer of depth to human society. Like there are people that just, I don't know. I feel like it's a, a level deeper. You know, you're born, you look like a man, but you don't feel like you were supposed to be a man. And I'm just like, oh. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I know I know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know how to properly articulate it because I'm not a part of the trans community, and that's another reason why I want them to come and represent themselves because it's such a different feeling. So let me ask you a question: With y'all being gay, watch, watch your mouth. I'm asking. This, we're having a conversation, right? Okay, but don't call me what. Are you? I'm confused. Are you not gay? No. Okay, Eric. Let me just ask you. <laughs> so, um, my qu- like, okay, so, so, are, so are y'all? Okay, I know you guys aren't trans, but are you saying that since you guys are gay, and you are attracted to men? Do y'all feel like women? No. Um, I there don't. was a point when I first first came out because everything in that community was so new to me, and I was made to feel so wrong for liking men. I was just like, mm, maybe I'm supposed to be a girl. Because if this is such a sin, maybe I'm in the wrong body. And then as I got older and realized that that's just not how it is, um, and that gay is fine, no, I realized I am not trans. Um, but I think it, it's so much deeper than that. I think it's like a la- it's just like layered levels of existence. Like you feel it throughout the course of your life. I don't think it's just like for me. I think I had that second for a hot moment in time. But, like, trans people live with that yeah. every day as kids. And just it's just, it's different. Like, gay and trans is not the same. They're mutually exclusive. You can be, because you can be trans and not be gay. gay. Huh? Like, you can be, like okay. Like, Jenner. Like, a trans, right. Like who? Ka- Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn has a girlfriend. S- Caitlyn wanted to be a woman, but she dates women still. Caitlyn still is likes a woman. women, just didn't feel she like a woman. She should be a man. Caitlyn I'm lost. Felt like a woman. We're talking about Bruce Jenner, right? We're talking yeah. about Caitlyn Jenner. Well, yeah, Caitlyn. you know I'm getting that. So we're talking about Bruce, who used to be a man. Mm-hmm. He transformed into Caitlyn, mm-hmm. and he dates women still. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because just because you're trans does not mean that you are gay. Because the trans part doesn't necessarily mean who you're attracted to. It means who you feel like you are as a person. It really only speaks to the individual. It doesn't speak to your attraction. Gay and lesbian means my lust Sexuality. or my, my interest is in the same sex. Trans is me as a person feels like I should not be a boy. I should be a girl. I can still think girls are hot. I just don't feel like I'm, I should be a boy pursuing them. I feel like I'm in the wrong body. So that's, that's what I'm saying. I don't get it. What's the What's the point? If you feel like you're supposed to be another sex, why are you dating the same sex? Because it's, it's because it's, it's not sexuality. It's not sex based. I don't get it. Because sexuality and gender are two different things. So you're a boy. You feel like a boy, but you're attracted to women. 
I'm a boy. I feel like a boy, but I'm attracted to men because my gender has a Y chromosome and I feel my Y chromosome, but my sexuality is attracted to another Y chromosome. Okay. I mean, so gender and sexuality are two separate things. Right. I'm so just... they have no correlation. Even though like we put it all together in the LGBTQIA community, they have gender and sexuality don't work on an alignment. Okay. I I think we should get a trans person on the show. I, I like think we should too. The dialogue would be really good. I feel like I would ask you and they would just get... No, I feel like we have to get a trans person that understands that we don't know it all. And we would like to have a better understanding. You can't understand what someone's going through unless you talk to someone about it. And I think that that's, that's going to have to be a genuine question, like a genuine conversation. I don't think they'll, they'll be offended. Like if I brought a farmer on here and I was asking them, how do you plow and how do you pick and how do you that's sow totally and different. stuff? Well, I don't know anything about it. So my questions may sound ignorant to them if I've never been on a farm. But if I never talked to a trans person or never dealt with any type of trans relations, I would not know. So I'm actually going to genuinely ask questions that I'm actually concerned about. It's it's similar to a white person asking um, or a black, a black person, person explaining hair. white privilege. A black person explaining a white person's privilege to them. Mm -hmm. It's like the conversation has to happen because for you living in this existence, it makes all the sense in the world to you. But to the other person, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? So it's the only way that it's going to happen. And I feel like me and Calvin have played advocacy for the trans community, but we're not trans. So I I only know as much as I know. Q says, so does the vagina or penis matter? Because the surgery for genitalia makes a person trans right <clears throat> no. i'm not exactly sure keith like that's something i also don't understand i don't know i don't know the levels to transsexual and transgender now i don't know if transsexual is the sexual part of it because that may be why they transition to transgender because sexuality and gender are two different things so i don't even know if transsexual is like a actual term was that one of those terms that's a no no terms because then you also have people that are in their transition but can't afford to go get the surgery. And, you know, like, say there's a, a person who is a trans woman, meaning that they're transforming into a woman. Um, and they don't have the surgery. They don't have the money for surgery. That doesn't necessarily mean that they don't feel like a woman. They're just not in the space that they can afford to go all the way to be their ideal self. I really want to get a trans person Me too, because the then there's also I'm people so that confused. don't have the surgery at all, but may identify with the opposite sex. We're going to set this up. I don't know when, but it's going to be good. It's a lot. Sexuality and gender are a lot. That and could be a whole series. And we'll get a few people in here, so that way it's more of a mixed crowd, and it's not just like schooling Chris. We'll just yeah, have we'll a healthy some, conversation. We'll get some trans. We'll get some straight. We'll, get, we'll, we'll make it a We'll like make it a, a thing. Yeah. Because I feel like it'll be good. It'll be necessary for the Because I'll be schooled, too, because I don't know. I just feel like at this time in this political climate, it's so important to talk about this because the amount of trans people that are getting killed is crazy. Are they about to pass, like, a law saying, like, um, like I don't know if it's, like, the surgery or something's not covered by health care or something's not. It's some type of thing that's about to go to the Supreme Court about trans rights. And I can't remember what it was. I don't know. But it's a, it's a trying time for for the trans community, especially like the rate that they're dying at. And, and no one really talks about it, but the trans community. I only keep this alive because this is a girl I follow. Her name is Hope, and she always talks about how like you know their gay brothers and sisters don't advocate and stuff like that. And I'm just like, yeah. You're right. So whenever I see something that's like semi trans related, and then of course like the shade room will post it, and the comments will be so fucking ignorant. Like, just so fucking ignorant, and I cringe, and I'm just like, I have to do it. Granted, I don't want to finish the show on, like, such a severe note, and it's not even fucking funny, but... I get it. What well, My freshman year, a trans woman was the first person to kind of, like, take me in. But hmm. they wouldn't... They hadn't fully transitioned, but it's kind of like, they... Now, she's fully transitioned. She's Bianca now. When I first met her, she was Tyree. Hmm. So, like, they fully transitioned now, but, like... They was the first person like show me how to register for classes, like where to get my books at. Like they were really nice and to me, so I understand like the plot. And I always fear for him because he lives down in Texas. So mm -hmm. like, well, her, she, excuse me, I always fear for her because she lives down in Texas. So it's like I get it. Because ultimately, people are just people, and I want to make everyone's lives a little easier to live. And I feel like the only way to do that is with understanding. And it's just the trans community isn't necessarily going to come on to you, Chris. Like a trans woman is not necessarily going to come on to you just because. They're trans. So I feel like 
what's the harm in conversing? What's the harm in understanding another person's way of living? It just makes you more well-rounded, especially with you trying to be in the field of entertainment. You're about to be around a lot of flamers. So not necessarily saying I'll trans gay, but you get what I mean. Like, it's just world perspective can only help. It can't hurt. Okay. So we're going to figure out how to do this and approach it properly. It'll be a good show. Jackie said, for the trans person I had on my show, they told me everyone's story and journey is different. I can send you their contact info to have on your show. Thank you, Jackie. Keep saying, apparently men can't be bi. Like Lil Nas X is considered gay, but obviously he's attracted to women. Men can't be bi. That's my, a, my sexuality is a real thing. That's I don't a think stupid it is. thought. What you get attracted to? I think if man? I think if you're I think if you if you're having sex with the same sex, you're gay. No, you're not. That's just me. That's just my take on it. Because I don't like women, so like exactly. I'm gay, but I don't have sex with them. So if I was you wouldn't sex right. with a woman, I'd be bisexual. I have a lot of guy- okay. friends that fuck both. Me too. Because there are also people that are attracted to the mind, and everyone Shuffle. has a mind. That's just me. I just feel like if you're having sex with the same sex, you're gay. Hmm. That's just how I think about it. I don't think bisexual is a real thing. You really can't wrap your mind around liking more than one? I, f- I don't think that. I just feel like if you're with the same sex, you're gay. Not, I'm not bashing it. I'm just saying no, like, that's just what I think Because bisexuality is. is a form of being gay. It's just not the same. That's just me. That's fine. That's, that's just me. We're going to find a way to tackle this because I feel like it's just so much explanation that needs to happen. And I'm done with bitch. You better read. So it's time the for mouse, the topic. The mouse doesn't work, so I can't take you out. <laughs> it died. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Like I can't. I can't do anything. I don't even think I could be able to end the show. It's connected. No, it's not. Oh wait. Okay. Strike while the iron is hot. Where it's a little nice sex. Now it is time for the topic. I was really hoping it would change by the one hundred episode. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna keep it. So the topic today, as we're on our hundredth episode, um, the topic is just the get right. So we're just going to let's just talk about the get right and how from episode one to now we're here at a hundred. So. <clears throat> I saw this and I was like, "What is he gonna do with this?" Um, <laughs> I just we just gonna we're just gonna reflect on a hundred episodes. So of I, course we don't know every single one, but a- absolutely not. There are like only a choice few that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, but <laughs> I will never forget the first day I was on. I don't even know how this happened. I saw a Keith post on Facebook something about like oh is there anyone interested in starting a podcast mind you i never met keith before so i don't know how this got on my facebook page um god yeah because i wasn't friends with him and it's something about like did you want to is anyone interested in podcasting and stuff like that so i dm'd him and um just told him about podcasting i did in the past we both discussed that we were sigmas and he was willing to take me on because of that and then Kelvin had wrote me like a few weeks back and was just like, hey, it was good, Fred. Probably in that deep ass voice. Hey, what's good, it was Fred? Good, Fred. <laughs> um, I'm moving out to LA. Uh, maybe we could get together sometime. So this is before you came to LA? I think it was like when he just, just moved. Yeah, just, just oh. moved. So, how did you see his profile? We yeah, met, I think, because of that gay Facebook group. Shh, no one knows about that. Is it we secret? met on Facebook. <laughs> are you serious? Because all those guys yes, are flamers. Child, yeah, it's a secret. What is a flamer? You. Gay, flaming homosexual, a flaming homosexual, which is derogatory, but it's fine. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Is it? Yes, yeah, call somebody a flamer. I call myself a flamer. Cause they used to burn gays. I didn't know that. I didn't know. That's that. why they call him a flamer. Oh, a flaming homosexual, literally a flaming homosexual. I gotta talk to it's my like- mom then. <laughs> <laughs> Something should be. Something. I just would have thought that meant like you're you're really you're really really gay. Really gay. Oh, they used to burn them like in Africa they stone them and burn them wow I didn't know that now that's a flaming homosexual literally it's a flaming homosexual alright well work with me it's gonna take some time for it's me like to stop calling nigga. myself a flaming pick a homosexual pick a anyway so you guys met in a flaming homosexual group <laughs> yeah we- <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you guys met <laughs> that's how we met and Kelvin wrote me and he was just like oh maybe we could get together no sexual shit not like just that like, right yeah. I was not trying to holler at it you. was it didn't give me that 
Um, and <laughs> okay, Chris, I, why would you cut your eyes at me like that? Because you start talking, I just looked at you. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, yeah, we got together and then went to meet with Keith. And then I don't fully remember how. We, I know I was still living in Long Beach at the time with Gabby and Gabby. I was like sleeping on their couch. And I met with Kelvin. He came to Long Beach one day after work. And then we just talked about what this show would look like. And yeah, we build it out. Do you remember the first episode? Huh? Do you remember the first episode? Not in full. I listened to it. I thought it was so trash. Did you? The very wow. first episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember you used to send us the link, me and Troy. You used to send us the link all the time. Yeah. And, I, and I heard the first episode. I was like, this is so bad. We didn't know what to do. We talking. <laughs> Like, we were just talking about anything. We didn't have a structure for the show. I don't think I had Bitch You Better Read. I don't think we had... We had the idea. I don't think it was anything. Yeah. I don't think it was anything. I think y'all were literally just talking. For two hours. Yeah, for yeah. two hours. And I it think that's what made it bad. Show. <laughs> it probably was our greatest show. If you listen to it... Talking for two hours. I did listen to some of it, and I, like, some of what we were talking about was funny, but it had no structure. It had no structure. It not, I was just like, what? Where, where is this show going? And, like, it were funny moments, but it, it made no sense. I think I stopped listening after, like, 30 minutes. Well, well that's pretty <laughs> well, okay. That's <laughs> that's Thank you for like, your... I, I made it into <sighs> Bitch You Better Read, well, but... Thank you so much. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, then Chris came on as a guest and never left. What episode did you guest? I don't know the number. I think we were like, were we in 40s? It couldn't be that far. Cause it, no, it had to be like in the late 20s, early 30s. My ex, loosely, uh, was, um, no, Cordier. He was episode 30. Oh. And you were a part of the show. Yeah, then. you were part of the show then. You came like before we Cord- hit 10. You His name was Cordier. Hey, it was one night after a bowling thing, and uh, he brought me here, and he became a guest oh, on the show. Oh, Lord. Do y'all remember the late night Thursday nights? Was oh, Thursday I hated that. Night? I hated that. If you are a real Get that. Right fan, if you are a true ride or die <laughs> Get Ooh, Right nigga, fan, I hated that. 11 to 1? I fucking hated that. Being on air from 11 to 1. To fucking 1. We did 11 to 1? 11 yes, p.m. to 1 a.m. You know how pissed I was? What the fuck was Every wrong with Thursday us? night. If you are I don't know, a real who, good whoa, right whoa, fan. Who decided, Eric, hey guys, he's he going at work. 11. Eric had to work. Where was I working? You was working at, um... It wasn't Zara. No, it wasn't Zara. Niggas really said 11 p.m. to 1. Like, who the fuck? something Why? else. I didn't realize else. that's how late we were. Yeah. If you were a true good right fan, you remember that. Wow. And I remember after a few weeks, I'm like, all right, look, we got we to gotta find a new day and a new time, new something. Because that 11 to 1 shit, that used to irritate me. I bet. <laughs> I'm irritated thinking about the fact that that was a thing. Wow. That is literally, literally 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. That sucks. And shout out to all those ride or dies that would stay up yeah. and listen to us. We had like two one. listeners. The Britney's. No, shout out to them. I appreciate <laughs> them. I appreciate them for sticking with us. As we become a Sunday morning national Wait, radio. you said I got you. <laughs> you said I got on an episode ten. You had to be. It was not that early. You had to be. Before I, was, the I think it was like twenty. You think I had to had get on like thirty or forty no. in? He was episode thirty. You were definitely our third host by then. And then Chris left us. Chris did leave us. I remember that. Like I know you were on before. Now I got to go back and listen. Chris left us, and because then, I was broke, I'm still broke. And then he came back, and we're happy he's back. And now we're here at the 100 episode. He was going for what, how many episodes? What do you like think? Three or four? Like, like I was going for like two months. Like two months. I was going for a minute. He was like for two months. And we had rotating hosts. Yeah, rotating <laughs> hosts. Yeah, I was <laughs> going for a minute. We were auditioning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the it view did not fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, work. what's been your favorite? What's been your most memorable? More bitch, you better read story. Let's start with there. Your most memorable bitch, you better read story. I don't think I have one. It's been so many. Um, it's been so many. My most memorable one? Uh, wow. I don't know. Um, it's been... I don't I don't know. It's been so fucking many that I cannot think of, like, one I would be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Okay, what's been your most memorable, like, one of your most memorable moments? We went through a lot. Like, cars getting towed. We done went through... <laughs> Apartment Almost changes. finding a uh, homeless woman about your car. Yeah. That one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been through a lot on this show. Yeah. I think my most memorable moment was Kelvin's birthday episode because I didn't see it Hot coming. Hot as fuck in, the, in this room. Yeah. I didn't because I didn't know what I was walking into. I was late as usual. And <laughs> I opened the door and it was flooded with people. And I'm just like, whoa, why the fuck are there so many people here? And I was like, I don't want to talk in front of all these people. But I wasn't going like, 
was I gonna do? Sit in the back? <laughs> Get on the mic. So that that was fun. That turned out to be one of our best shows, definitely. Um, to Wanda so for me, yeah, your mom was here. Like, Shout out to what was yours, Kevin? Um, I love when we do skits, and we haven't done that in a long time. No, bitch, you better read. Oh, bitch, you better read. Uh, my favorite bitchy bit. I don't even know, Chad. I, I don't, don't even know why, why you actually I don't know why. Yeah, you know like, how many bitchy better reads it is? I set y'all up. <laughs> For failure. I set y'all up. But my most, my favorite moments are here when we take on these stories from Bitchy Better Read and, and bring them to life where our listeners can see and hear what actually happened. Like Beyonce's campaign speech. I, I listened to that. I was going to say that. Day. That was the funniest one. That was Beyonce. fucking hilarious. Wow. I forgot about Beyonce's campaign speech. And of course, Deborah. I love Deborah. Deborah has been great. Uh, no. Like three weeks ago, the Asians. The Asians with the nails, with yes, the yes, yes. Um, in the chair, couldn't sit in the chair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I yeah, remember that's that. One. That's one of my favorite moments. Yeah, I love the skits. I think. Um, do y'all have a favorite Chris tip or it's Chris topic? Uh, yes. How to shoot a shot? You I'm probably still, don't even I'm use it. still trying to shoot my shot. I still try to like pictures and little lily emoji. I'm getting it back. Somebody that identified said thank you, Kelvin. <laughs> what? Just because they said thank you? To but what? They said Kelvin. To you following them? No, I said happy birthday. They said thank you, Kelvin. <laughs> Eric? Um, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. Qu- God damn, y'all, there's 100 episodes. How am I going to think about what my favorite Chris tip was? Um, Or topic. The shooting the shot one was memorable, but. I want to say that there's been so many where you've asked how to like basically take your friends' significant others. No, it hasn't. Yes, it has. Th- that's there's been only, more than no. Three. That's only more than three. Calvin. Yeah, there's been like five. There's times. been a few. No, no it, it's probably been, been it, about the same person. Maybe no, not about no, different people. No, no, Y'all no. making that up? We're not. Y'all making are making that up. If Calvin said it, I'd be like, okay, maybe he's making it up. I have Calvin, it's, it's been multiple it. people. Yes. No, it hasn't. It has. <laughs> it's been the one person I've been talking about. No. And that's why I responded the way I did earlier. I'm like, Chris, this is a trend. Y'all bullshitting. Okay. Y'all just made that up. Is it really hard for you to believe 100 episodes in? Yeah, because that hasn't that has it hasn't been multiple people. I've only been talking about that one person. Okay. That's my favorite. Anyway, <laughs> mine is uh, I think my favorite Chris tip had to be shooting shots and uh, the Valentine's Day one. What was the? I think I said. Oh, about how it's not just for ladies; it's for men as well. I don't remember everything I said. I just remember it was like a, a lame ass joke in there about something about tootsie rolls. God damn it! You see that there's been too many. There's been too many for me to remember the specifics behind it. Oh, I loved our live show, the one we did in the backyard. Simply wholesome Simply was wholesome. cool too, but I'm talking about the one that was before my music video because I didn't know what that day was gonna bring i didn't know if anyone was gonna come but i think that show turned out really good and we had a lot of crowd participation the girl at the simply wholesome spot remember the girl who um the one who was being a bitch who you talking erica about erica badu who With the hair wrap it was one that was really unpleasant she, erica who are we talking about got there she had the hair wrap on she was yeah. not pleasant at all at all oh the w- woman who worked there yes no i'm not the one who did the sage yeah. Yes. No, I'm talking about her. I'm talking about. Remember, it was a girl. Herself, trying to save her. It was a girl who came in late. Like we didn't know her. She oh, just came you in. Wanted to get her number. Her. Yeah. I. I tried. Well, we exchanged numbers, but like nothing. She wasn't. She said she didn't want to date. Mm. So, and I feel like that's an excuse to just say you're not interested. Like just say you're not interested. Like don't tell me you don't want to date. I mean, I don't want to date, but I'm talking to people. I feel like it's just it, it's just a different type of energy behind. I it. just hate that it's like, oh, I'm not ready to date. Yeah, you are, because if the right motherfucker came along, you will be ready to date. No, only because I'm in that space right now. I, I'm just trying to lower expectation because I feel like I don't want to put myself in a realm to have to act a certain way or like I don't want you to expect certain things of me when like I don't want you to think I'm exclusive to you when I know I still want to fuck with other people. Like I just that, that needs to be communicated. But I that's why it. I'm saying I'm not trying to date. I get it. I'm just not trying to date the right per- the wrong person because child 10, 10, 20, 20. She could have just said, oh, I'm not interested. Like that. Just say that. What the fuck do you mean you don't? You are. W- I- but what if she wanted to hang out and stuff? She could have said that. 
but I feel like her saying she's not interested, literally, you would have just took it and been like, cross off. Now, if she would have said, I'm not interested, but we can hang out, if we would have continued to hang out, she would have liked me eventually. I guarantee that. Yeah. Okay, Chris. So, I that and that. that's all I'm saying. I'm saying if she, if we would have took it there, mm-hmm. then yeah, she would have liked me. No, I, I believe and that. And she thick as, oh my God. I'd be looking at her page like, God damn. All right. Making yourself sound lonely. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> next question. Stalker. Um, <laughs> how is that a stalker? Because <laughs> I look at her page. We follow each other. Let me just go to her page. Look at her ass. Oh. Yeah, she has a fat one. She's thick, and she got big titties. Well, what I is do, the I do big go to other people's pages. Like, oh, so y'all could talk about niggas all day, but I can't say we somebody got a got a fat like ass that. and big titties. No, I I I I love voluptuous titties. I love big titties. Eric, go ahead, because you're. I love titties. We don't we don't specifically get into details with niggas. We don't. Yes, y'all do. I never no, say don't. that nigga got a fat ass and a big dick. Okay, that's not why. Why? That's just what, what you that's said. Isn't that what you just said? That's but no, but y'all, but y'all do get into specifics. What specifics? Y'all have y'all have been y'all have been into specifics. We have not been gutter about that. On yes, y'all one, have. On this one hundred episode, let's reflect. You gonna say he hasn't? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna say that Kelvin hasn't? How many times you on the show have you heard him say he's Kelvin had sex with so and so? Well. Exactly, no. he has went into detail about it, but and he, like, he 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 used to always say, "Cover yours, Chris." <laughs> <laughs> you can't say he don't say yeah, that. That's true. Uh, well, I can only speak for myself. That my wig I was falling um, off when I did. <laughs> and now he has a wig. <laughs> what is the one thing that the get right your time on the get right has taught you, or you've learned about yourself doing this show? Mm, I would say that. Um. Don't doubt your opinion. And your opinion matters, and your voice matters, no matter how big or how small it is. Your voice matters, and uh, you're speaking not only for you but for other people. And that the boundaries of love is endless, because you never know who may need something, or who needs to be talked to, or who needs to a friend. And I feel like we become people's friends. I agree, and I like that. Because you are my friend. And it's the only time I get to talk to Chris. This is literally the only time I talk to Chris. I can see Chris staying in his room. You know, I'm, I'm, and he makes it seem like I'm never home. I'm always in my room. The light is always off, Chris but I'm always in there. Chris has not been home lately. <laughs> Such a lie. Where the fuck have I been? I don't know. I was going to ask you, but I didn't want to ask you in there. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I think it's um, something to that extent. Because this is like, I think this is like the place where we can just say whatever the fuck we feel. Yeah, and usually, do. like, in the world, like, if we were outside, we wouldn't say half the shit. Well, we would still think it, but we wouldn't, like, vocally, like, how we feel like, you know, Chinese people can't drive. Well, so we wouldn't actually just go up to them and, like, you know, squint our eyes and be like, nigga, you can't see me. <laughs> like, you know, we, we wouldn't actually go up to them and, like, say that. Oh, my God. So, Why do we have to squint our eyes? Right. Why, you, they, they Why do was like, that the like first that. step? Because that's what the... What do you mean? That's how all of their eyes are closed. You practically, you need to squint your eyes to tell an Asian that they can't they drive. No, I didn't. I didn't have to. Okay, that's just, that's just where it went. That's uh, just where it went. Like, <laughs> and that's a part of the problem here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's like a lot of like, us are racist. <laughs> well, all of us are. Yeah, like everybody. Everybody has a little racism in them. Mm, yeah, and that, and I think we all have to accept that everybody has somewhat of a race. Like it's, everybody is somewhat racist. Just slightly opinionated and prejudiced. Yeah, just a <laughs> little bit. <laughs> I, I, I can admit that I'm racist. Okay. Just not to us niggas. Mm-hmm. Like to my black people, I'm not. I'm an equal opportunity offender. I talk shit about everyone and everything. Me three. Um, Do y'all have a favorite guest on the show? You cut me off. I didn't get to answer. Oh, my bad. <laughs> God damn I feel it. like I always do that. My yeah, I'm bad. I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of being Angela Yee. <laughs> Um, Don't do Angela. That's what the, all the guests say that they get. She gets cut off. And she that's does. That was real. She does. People say that show is very sexist. <laughs> she does what she can. Um, Thank you. Black people cannot be racist. I've been saying that for forever. Said that Keith? No, no was, Kyrie. Kyrie said that. I've been saying that for forever. I feel like we cannot be racist. But go ahead. Eric. Um, I think the thing that I learned is that one, it, like appreciate what it is that you as an individual bring to the table and two authenticity cells and three family is wherever you go like i don't think that i at the start of this thought i would get as close to you guys as i did like kelvin was cool and we were like hanging like we would go to all the gay functions and stuff together and it was cute 
but then like as time came like i think when i was really homeless and sleeping at y'all's house that's when i was just like oh damn like <laughs> was that before i got on the show had to yes think, yeah, it, it was because we weren't talking because i much. remember i remember when he first asked me to let he was like hey can you go downstairs and let somebody name eric in i'm like who the fuck is eric <laughs> and then um yes i remember when much. yeah and i remember when i first went down like i was so annoyed because i was like who who is eric <laughs> and then i opened the door and he was like no you know what i think you do do that hey what's up man because you you was like hey what's up bro or something <laughs> like that and wow. Eric was like, yeah, I think you did because because you was like, "What's up, man?" And then because I remember, I, I text Kevin was like, "Is that so and so?" Because I thought you was somebody else. Because what? Oh, I thought he was. Oh, um, thought he, yeah. I thought he was somebody because it's another friend brother that we have, and I thought uh-huh. you was. I thought you were him. Mm. And um, yeah, and then I remember like it turned into every night almost, and then I'm like, for like a week, I'm like, is he moving in? Like, what's mm. going on? Like, is this Kevin's nigga? Like, what's happening? It's not my nigga. I mean, that's what all the social media thought. Yeah, they thought we was. <laughs> Which is why me and Kelvin call each other boyfriend, boyfriend and boyfriend because everyone on social media, if I post to him like twerking in the mirror, they'd be like, "Is that your man?" I'm like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? That's <laughs> not my man." Um, and then like with Chris, I think when we first started, I didn't think that Chris was gonna be able to handle me. Handle me? Who gonna handle Who gonna me? Handle me? <laughs> but like, I didn't think he was gonna be able to handle me because I was. I'm pretty sure you've never met a me before. Yeah, you my, have. My sense is, I'm gonna say Rodney is, is probably. Is, yeah. really? No, probably, or probably a little bit more. Really? Super dramatic. I, yeah, Rodney is like we need yeah. a Rodney on the motherfucking show. No, we don't. Show. We, don't. Right now. <laughs> we don't need Rodney. But on the like show. crop top shorts and all that. I'm like, he is not gonna. But be Rodney, able to take that's the only thing. Rodney, he don't wear crop. I think he would, but mm. he he doesn't. Mm. So like holistically, I was just like, I think I'm gonna be too much for Chris. But um, it was good for me because I was just like, I don't give a fuck. I was here first. Like I'm gonna be <laughs> like this. Um, yeah, my deuce is the exact same way. That's so cool. And then as time went on, like just being able to talk to you and hanging out, like there are times where Kelvin will just be in his own fucking world, and I'll connect with Chris more that mm-hmm. day, and it'll just be like me and Chris see eye to eye a lot more than I think <laughs> that yeah. we or I thought we would, and I just like truly enjoyed having you as a friend because at this point i don't think of you as like a host like a co-host i think of you like oh, yeah I like Chris. i think when i first got on the show it was like okay those are co-hosts yeah because yeah. i remember that you asked and kevin was just like would you want chris to be on the show i'm like you know i don't really care about much i'm just like yeah that's fine and <laughs> he was like okay well i'll let him know and then from there it just kind of just started working mm-hmm. but i think like being in your car talking about past relationships and stuff was just like wow oh chris <laughs> Once I once I started hugging you, I was like, I really like Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all have a favorite guest on the show? Hmm. Our loudest shows when Mod was here. That was a really good. And show, I like that show. That that was, that's I my. I think that's my favorite show. Mod. Oh. Okay. MOD. So I have a confession. I think I seen the female co-host of Mod at the Urban Outfitters. But I Whitney? spoke, yeah, Whitney, and I don't want, to, yeah. Whitney. Her name's Whitney. I know, <laughs> I know, but I, I spoke and I kept looking, uh-huh. and then she looked back and she acted like she was gonna say something to me. You saw her in my brunch too. I did, but I didn't know if it was her or not, and I feel bad because if it was her, then I feel like I fake a shit. But if it wasn't her, then y'all I'm not like, even what friends. Going on? But y'all still, met all of twice. <laughs> <laughs> y'all met twice. She was a good vibe. I feel <laughs> fake a shit though. And I remember she uh, got on your ass about being a Beyonce fan. Yeah, she did. But she she got my ass because she thought I was hating on Beyonce. Because you said she couldn't fan. read. Yeah, because yeah, I can't read. Right. You called her illiterate. You did. I mean, He's R. Kelly's black. illiterate too, but don't make his music not good. Fantasia, I'm gonna say, Fantasia can't read. I'm not walking into. But it. she sings her face off. I'm gonna say that was my favorite guess. Hell, but, um, Mozart can't read. He blind. Who? Mozart. Oh. Tell me this music <laughs> not not amazing. Okay, I'm gonna say when MOD was here. <laughs> Shit, Stevie can't read. He's fucking blind. Okay, but it's music. <laughs> but the well, different the difference is Beyonce Braille. isn't isn't blind though. Is he blind to read it? <laughs> oh You're not a fan. You're a whore. I hope she never listens to this show. <laughs> I do too, because I think by association, I'll lose everything I'm supposed to get. I love B and B loves me. Um yeah, we know Fantasia, Kyrie. I wasn't going to say that cruel shit. Um, <laughs> a favorite guest. I really enjoyed having Gabby and Gabby come on the show. I Like I said, I love Kelvin's um, birthday episode. MLD was so much fun. 
I don't know. I also really like having. Um, sh- uh, I was about to say Shana, Shana and Kirsten. Bitch, I need you to pick a name. <laughs> it's a storm you Simone and Kirsten um, on the show. Because I feel like the just Well, uh, and Mies too. Because that was a thing at a point. They were a trio. And because I feel like Shana's energy complements your energy a lot, Chris. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Simone is kind of like the me in a way where it's just like we kind of flow <laughs> we're just like keep the peace keep the peace but we'll talk shit <laughs> and then you had me and kelvin and i was just like i like the dynamic of all of us together yeah um damn we've had so many good shows I and like, i loved vani i love the sex vani's toys. sex toys oh, i was so uncomfortable that show i bet i love when I the ladies, so night ladies came to visit us that was a good one i liked when we did when, when we did a whole tour Ladies Night never came on our show. Oh, I, I think we had Jackie. There. Jackie. When we had the good and news. And we went on they there. Came, they, we on there. Yeah. Oh, shit. Right when the good news was a radio show, they came on. And then we went to it Ladies Night separately. I love when we did the tour. The get that right with. Good. Getting right with. We didn't do that again. That was good. And we hit every single show. Except for the sports show. We didn't hit every show. We didn't go to the sports shows. We weren't ready for those We didn't hit every show. What? I'm just saying we didn't. We didn't hit all the sports shows. Oh no, that's yeah. <laughs> was it because we didn't? No, we, we, like had, touchdowns we, we had touchdowns and We had touchdowns and tangents. Yeah, we well, we had we them. had um, yeah, we had touchdowns and tangents. I'm sports illiterate, so I felt like that's why we kind of like it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we need to hit the sports shows. We need to go and see Studio Two. We should. I mean, there's a no. Whole they could come here. Show. We have Studio One. They'll yeah, they be on our yeah, show, they so could, they could come yeah, here. They come here. Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole new crop of shows. Um, you got to get Brianna and Kyrie said, "When can he be a guest? When you want to come on." Wait, so what, all right, if we doing the Get Right With thing, what month? Let's do the Get Right With month of October. Let's do it. That's next weekend. Let's yeah, do it. Let's talk about it first. We got a lot coming up. We do, because since it's 100, we're taking it to another level. Yeah. He said he's a we're fan. We're taking it to another level up in here. Kyrie said he's a fan. Oh, thank you. That was, that was, thank you, Kyrie. Actually, no, Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie can't come. Why? He said I didn't like living single, so he didn't invite me on his show that one day. Uh, oh, was that what that was? That makes sense. You fucked that up. So he can't come now. Um, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, okay. Is there a least favorite guest you had? I don't know if I had a least favorite guest. You know, and I feel like it just sounds bad. I don't have one so, off the top I'm of sure my head. I'm sure they whoever we're going to say, they're, they're not going to listen. They are. I don't know if you looked at the board. I just don't want to put it out there because they took the time to come be here. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm appreciative of everybody who's it. ever stepped foot into this good news radio station to get on the Get Right Radio Show. Thank you so Why much. Why are we sitting here lying and saying that we don't have somebody that we didn't like on the show? Well, I'm <laughs> pleading the fifth one because I can't. If we had like a list, I could be. I at least would have something to go off of. But I don't even have that. So And I'm just like... Mm. And there was no guest that came and I'm just like, good God, Chris, hit the Get Right theme song. I am <laughs> I'm grateful for everybody who has come to the show. Do you have a least favorite guest since you're, you're right, a since you're I feel like I do. I'm just trying to think of like who all we've had on our show. I don't have a point of reference. How many should, let me think. I feel like we've had about 20 guests in our 100 shows. I think we had about like maybe 20 episodes with guests. Maybe. Uh, so thank you for tuning in to us every no, week because that's, that's like 80 episodes of yeah, us talking shit and I appreciate is, that. Who's the one guest that we had? He came to the he came to your music video. He had um this is my least favorite. He had he had a top hat on. It wasn't like a tall top hat. He had like a, a smaller top hat. He had glasses. I want to say he's a singer. I think. He listens to the show and I'm not going to say his name. But I know exactly who he doesn't about. listen to. Yes, I don't ever does. see his name on the thing right he here because everybody that listens to the show does not chat. <laughs> so that's whoever. Because that's sometimes what I'm people about. they play it back, Chris. They play it back in the morning. <laughs> that's what I'm work. talking about. I don't know his so name. I appreciate everybody who's come to the show. Can you tell them his name real quick? I appreciate everybody <laughs> who has come to the show, and I thank you guys. Can thank you me. agree, Eric? Were you here? No, was Thank it just you. us? Thank you, everybody who's ever stepped. Was it just us, Kelvin? Fucking speaking on this. Was it just? Anyways, us? moving right along. Um, so thank you hello? guys for listening to us for 100 whole episodes. That is freaking crazy out here. People didn't even make I, it to. I'm a, not gonna be able to end the show. Yeah. Like, oh uh, uh, well, most doesn't. Well, 
I guess we just gotta make the songs with our fire mouse. <laughs> Something no, but I still to. can't end the show though. <laughs> I think you can. I How? Think you just gotta find a way to do turn it. Turn it back on. But um, yeah, no, thank you guys so much for just listening to us talk our shit for two years of the get right. We made two years on September seventh. So thank you guys for rocking out with us as Kelvin and Chris try and figure out the mouse. I love um, this cave. And yeah. This we- shit is broke. <laughs> <laughs> And if you if, if you are I a fan of the game, right, you will know that we have gone through so. What has been your most stressful? Uh, uh, Keith said he know who I'm talking about. Keith, I'm calling you just to let you know. What's been like your most memorable technical difficulty that we then had here? I was about to say, Nigga, you, you, you breaking you breaking the board every We've fucking had Sunday. So many technical difficulties and people just stick staying staying late. Nigga, I said like five times batteries in the bathroom. I I didn't I changed the batteries twice. You said what? I changed the batteries twice. You changed the batteries twice? Hold on, we hold on. That didn't work. Yeah, right. I changed it twice. Do you have like some fresh new ones? Um, which ones did you put in? You the put one the, in uh, this energizer thing. The rechargeable one? Did you tell us put in? Is this even on? Like the rechargeable thing? What a great way uh, to finish our hundredth so episode. Saying, it be the it off and then cut it back on. Yeah. I've been doing that all episode. It makes perfect sense. Uh, it's it has to be the battery, that's the only thing. It would say, I mean, uh, there's a way to to check the battery, uh, like, like, um, as both it. If you click it, it'll let you know what the mouse and the, and, and the uh, keyboard is on. This ghetto ass click, show. Wait, click what? Why is this show so ghetto? So, I've never been on the show that you have to call the, the right, owner it'll, it'll let you know <laughs> to the cut off the broadcast. The computer, if you, get, if you have to click on it, it let you know, like, where the battery. But I can't click on nothing if the mouse is dead. Why is this on the I air? can't click on nothing if the mouse is dead. Episodes of this <laughs> fuckery. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really. It's not, I can really do where I'm at. So, <laughs> so I guess I mean, that means we're going to keep talking. <laughs> All right, we gonna figure it out. We we may be uh past our we time may just, eventually. We may just be here till Kyrie getting here, so that way he just gotta come <laughs> in and build on the <laughs> damn right. mic. Yeah, no, this, uh, this, I'm I'm sure that the batteries are just dying. So, and then if, if those batteries not working, that means that that um they're not recharged. So somebody probably took it out of the, the wall to plug something else in and never plugged it back up. Oh, yeah, because it, it wasn't plugged in when I when I got it. Okay, well, then that, that, there it is. I usually plug it up, and then somebody plugging their charger, they can take it out. Take us out. Take us out. Take us oh, out. We're, we're All right, y'all. If you all right, follow all right, us right, at the Get Right, that's T-H-E, right. Get Right, never on mind. Instagram. Never Bye. Mind. Never mind. It's dead again. Bye. Hold this ghetto ass show. <laughs> Why? Thank is you so this much g- for listening for a hundred episodes. Thank you for listening for a hundred whole episodes. And if you know us, you know we're not a stranger to technical difficulties. We either can't start the show, or in this case, we can't finish the show because God wants us to keep going to the one hundred and one oh. episode. Oh, so if I get cut off in the middle of the thing, because I just want Eric just to press stop and <laughs> just press stop. So if it even happens, it may just happen. Can we use the keyboard? Can we tab it over? Can you tab to a whole nother window? I don't. Can no, you on the press the Child. I'm about, I'm about to press somebody else talking to Mike. I'm pressing tab. What options are they giving me? They just gave me a whole nother window. They give you another window. Just come over here and look. <laughs> Hold on, guys. See? That. Every time I press tab. never happened when I was on the board. The batteries have nothing to do with me. It being closer don't mean shit. It's the batteries that's dead. How are we going to end it? Oh, we're about to mute the mics? How about, no, let's, let's, all, let's all just end it together. Let's end it together. <laughs> that was a production tip, but Chris doesn't know the difference between production tips and what's going on there. So... Thank you for listening to the Get Right. <laughs> We're going to leave right now. Uh, as always, you can catch me at Kelvin Algy. That's K-E-L-V-I-N-O-L-O-G-Y on your Instagram. And also make sure you follow the Get Right Radio Show on Instagram as well to stay up to date with all the craziness that's going on with us. And thank you for listening for 100 episodes. Eric?
<laughs> As always, you can catch me on Instagram at the world according to Eric, Facebook and Twitter at Eric Devante, and Snapchat at Picasso underscore three, and at this show for the longest run time in history. <laughs> you can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at CCC. AW underscore and um as always guys I hope you got right. That's right. Get right or get left. Bitch, you better get right. <laughs> like this board. Okay, mics are being muted. Oh, why would you tell everybody our <laughs> production secret? Let's mute it now. Oh, and mine is it.